Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. It's time for the J. Craig Podcast. Playing on headphones near you. Dun, dun, dun! Jason Catron! Merry, Merry Christmas, my friend! Merry Christmas, Craig! What's happening, man? Not a lot, man. Not a lot. How are the uh, how's the holiday season treating you? Holiday season is good, man. It was uh, it came like just flash of lightning, you know. It just came quick, gangbusters, right? And then you're like, holy crap! It's already Christmas, and I had all my shopping done way early. It was great. The kids got what they wanted. Uh, Levi got a telescope, which he's like, super excited about. Mm-hmm. And nice. we had people over yesterday for our open house brunch, and it was fun. We all got really intoxicated and had a good old time. So, man, how how, how was uh, how was a Merry Christmas for you in the desert? Well, they do they do what they can in the dining facility, like they'll decorate. And this they they had an Indian gentleman. They put him in a Santa Claus costume in the Santa. He <laughs> sat, nice. He sat in a cardboard sled, <laughs> and like it's they they do the best they can. They do a really good job. That's good. You know, it's, well, they got to give the people a, something get, from home. Yeah, you get a decent meal, good. and then you try you try not to work everyone too hard. Right. And uh, give people some time off. And that's about it. It's just, it's, you know, here it's not a big deal, but it just, it's still, I think other religions and other countries haven't figured out more than the states do is you've got like two months of build up to Christmas and it's one day. Yeah. Well, like Christmas Eve and then the day and it's over. Like that, yeah, give it three days. Yeah. You know, yeah. give, give it some time let, let to breathe. breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Let it breathe. You know? Like yeah. today, like it's Tuesday, I, I should be doing work today. But you know what? I had a lot to clean up. We had I had still I had Legos to put together for the boys. I want a podcast. I was like, you know what? Another day, whatever. I'll, I'll power through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> that I, I really think because I really think because you have Christmas and then essentially five days later you have New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Just make that week like a holiday week. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, no one's, frankly, nobody nobody's wants to work. Right. No, nobody wants to do anything anyway. And for me, going out yeah. and prospecting, no one's at work anyways. People are taking vacation time. Uh, you know, they have shutdowns. So I'm trying to close accounts that they're not ready to close because they had to talk about this after the new year. It's like, well, we're closing down next week, so yeah. we'll do this later. So it's like, nobody's all right, making, whatever. Nobody's making hard decisions in the No, 27th. exactly. And I'm not yeah. going to press it. It's like, okay, I'd like to have that extra commission this month, but you know what? It'll come next month, you know, so whatever. <laughs> well, it gives you a chance to rest, gives you a chance to recharge. I, I mentioned the telescope, so Levi's going to be six, and he wanted a telescope. And that kid was wiping it off. He was putting on the lens caps. He was, he was mm. like, he was telling Jesse not to play with it. Like, he was really serious about it. And so was it like a, is it a kid's telescope? No, or a it's, a, it's telescope? a telescope telescope. Yeah, man. Okay. I mean, it wasn't expensive. I got him like a starter one. You know, it was only like right. 60 bucks, sure, normally sure. like maybe 100 bucks. I got it on sale. Okay. But I wanted to get them something just to start. And I want them to, you know, experience, you know, what's out there. And so we last night, we, the moon came out, and I zeroed everything in with the little star finder. And I was able to find the moon and get them to look at it. And they're like, oh, that's the moon. And it was oh, like, yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna be able to have fun with that. I just, I was just impressed that he's like taking such a ke- taking such care of it, you know. Like this is my right, instead telescope. Of, instead of like putting on a battle outfit and using it like it's like a weapon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come here. Yeah, because I expect it's hard him to, break to believe it. he's. It's hard to believe he's six years old. I still remember that time I came back from. I don't remember where I was anymore, but I came back and we were working on that screenplay, and he was like just. Like getting up and holding onto the table. Yeah. Just starting to bounce, you know, like like a pro wrestler holding onto the yeah, ropes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he turn around, oh. balance himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now you know, and then and then you know, he's like now he's you know doing math problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's awesome. Well, Craig, let's get down to brass tacks because while it's Christmas, you finally saw a movie. And we, I have, did see a movie. And we, we, need, we need to talk about that before we go into our end of the year review here for the Jay Craig podcast. Welcome back, everybody, by the way, to the Jay Craig well, podcast. Welcome back. Welcome back to everyone. Welcome to our end of the year celebration Absolutely. 2017. Absolutely. We're going to get into that in a minute. And I hope everyone had a very, very Merry Christmas. By the time this comes out, Happy New Year to everybody. It'll be coming out next uh, this coming weekend. Happy and, 2018. Uh, so in the next little while, we are going to talk about the end of the end of year review on all the movies that came out, all the things we saw and didn't see. But let's talk about the movie you just saw. Finally, I just I finally saw 
Well, finally, it's only a week late. I know, but still. I, I combed the desert spaceball styles <laughs> and asked nice everyone reference. that I knew and everybody that had download capabilities to get a hold of a decent copy. So I wasn't going to watch a trashy one For, to okay, get a decent God, copy yeah. of The Last Jedi. Right. Yes. So you finally saw and The I, Last Jedi. I saw I it three times. So let's... Let's let's talk about that because I know we we had a little bit of a blast on uh, I don't know if you call it a blast or just a anarchy over on Facebook we, about it. We have we have differing opinions, varied varied opinions on 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 the Last Jedi. So um, let's just get right to it, man. Um, you liked it. I know you liked it because I, thought I it was fucking. I, I thought knew fucking you were gonna great. like it. I thought it was fucking great. It has now. I'm saying that I think it's fucking awesome. Fucking with, awesome. a couple, with, with a couple cap with a couple caveats, mm-hmm. it's a little too long. Mm-hmm. I could have done without Canto Bright. Yep. And even though I think it, in a way it's cool, I think the execution of Leia's spacewalk could have been executed better for a better effect. It's a really um, really bad moment there, man. It's it's the way it's the way that it's photographed. I mean, you don't photograph it, special effect. Yeah. The way that the, the composition of the frame and how she just how she moves could have been handled better. It starts off with a beautiful shot. It starts off with the ice forming on her face, you mm-hmm. know, and you're like, God damn, like Leia's. This is how they're gonna do it, huh? Well, yeah. Oh my god! And then she, you know, she puts her hand out and so on. I just thought that could have been handled with how visually impressive the rest of the movie is i thought that could have been handled a little bit. I, I will say visually after seeing it three times you know um it's funny it's a movie i don't like and i still saw it three times that's the effect star wars has on me but um I, it is a visually stunning movie there's a it's there's a gorgeous palette at play um you know on par with something like the look of empire even from 1980 but with more updated looks to it and more you know it's, it's an impressive looking movie i will give it i will definitely give it that like the way just just the way he moves his camera, I, I read something online that kind of encapsulated what I was thinking as I watched it was, mm-hmm. like Rain Johnson's directing like he's never going to get the chance again. Mm. So he's putting all his visual tricks and his flair and his fo- bringing your eye to what he wants you to look at and his the way he does his reveals and um, yeah from visual because I've watched it, I've watched the whole thing front to back twice. And then because I have a copy of it, mm-hmm. I've watched certain individual things multiple times. Gotcha. I've watched the culmination where everything comes together um, with Snoke and mm-hmm. their fight with the with the guards and Haldo using the hyperdrive, which is oh. a fucking beautiful yeah. moment. Yeah. That, that I've is watched a that. gorgeous moment. I've at least watched that whole sequence, mm-hmm. which is an amazing sequence, at least six times. And then I've obviously watched the end multiple times. And um, Yoda, I went back to Yoda a few times, and but I mean, I, I but I'll, I I recognize I'll have no issue watching the whole thing from front to back. Hmm. Yeah, I um I I'll say there's some moments there that are, are beautiful. The the explosion of the Star Destroyer is just kind of eye opening and shocking to see it played <laughs> that you, way. Did you did you see that the opening that opening weekend that happened? And people were like sound. So, ah, no. and people, some some guys got so panicked they ran out of the cinema. The sounds off. The sounds off. It was like, for, like it was like two seconds. It was like two seconds guess, worth of that. I, mean, I think it's like actually. I think it's actually eight seconds. Is it really? Because yeah. so it's like I I had no I had no question what they were doing there. I was like, oh, cool. Way to work the right. sound out of it for a second, just to give you that visual, and then all of a sudden the sound comes back into play because it's like just the way it was. And then they, you know, had reverse or different views of what was happening, and it was just, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was uh, that was unique. That was very unique. That was that was one of the out of out of several times I was watching it, where I thought, God, I can't believe I'm not watching this in the IMAX. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I've got a big, yeah. I've got a good size. Well, it's not a good size for where I am. It's a good size TV. It's like a forty something. But no, it doesn't do it justice. Yeah, though, I mean, on a big screen. No, obviously. there was there was a few times where, and I purposely like positioned the chair and i sat on the floor so it was a little bit above me uh, okay and to get the whole experience <laughs> right, and i right. got i want to got popcorn from the mwr that is funny and i was like oh i made a whole night out of it trying, oh, yeah. he's trying to do, he's like, trying to replicate a a, a viewing <laughs> well it was a big i mean it's a big you know star wars it's it's a big deal for me still yeah. so yeah. what i did is i put it in real quick and i watched like 90 seconds of it to see the quality okay and i was like okay like this is good i'm gonna watch this 
it was, it was shitty, I wasn't going to watch Sure. And then I went and got everything and, like, ran around and um, got all my shit ready and sat down. And, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, man, I'm glad you yeah. got the chance to see it because I, I knew it was going to be a long time before you got to the theater to see it if that was ever going to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got to see it. Uh, and I'm not surprised you liked it because I, walking out, I, I had a strong suspicion this is a movie Craig's going to like. And... <laughs> <laughs> much like uh, I believe Jeff Caldwell will like it for similar reasons uh, I haven't heard back from Jeff but he saw it yesterday um, oh, okay. but you know just to t- touch on a couple points here um, I did not gra- I did not see the story that you saw when uh, what you what you got from it is not what I got from it I, I saw I saw moments where they were trying to do that I saw thematic aspects of what they were trying to do with themes and, and story but Never did it correlate to me on a, on a, on a personal level or that re- really honed in it. It just had so many bad things for me where I had a hard time piecing those moments together into a cohesive thread where I was like, no, no, no. And then it, by the time it, halfway through the movie, I was already lost. I was lost in, in the That's parade. too bad, man, because I think it's – I mean, I could go into detail about why, why I like it so much that I do is it it – it gets to the heart of, and I don't want to use the terminology when I was a kid, is Star Wars has always spoken about the the selflessness of the hero and that anyone can change the course of evil or stand up against the machine and change history, and it doesn't matter who you are, it matters what's inside of you. Mm-hmm. And 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 doing that inspires others to rise to great things. And this movie, more than anything, since I think there's elements of it. The prequels, George Lucas just became a filmmaker who wasn't able to convey it. But I mean, to me, this this says it the best since the original because the because Empire Strikes Back is a superior film, mm-hmm. but it's not trying to hit on those themes. No, it's it's making something and different, but it's, it's keeping the it's, characters it's, consistent. That's about it. Right, right. But to me, this movie, I mean, when he, when Luke does what he does, and, and the first time I watched it, I was kind of like, God, you know, if only Luke would have would have been there in person. And then when I watched it again, I was like, No, no, like I really, I like the choice they made because he's able to. He's not only does he cement his legend, he's because no one out there knows that he wasn't there. Nobody who witnessed that doesn't know that he's there. So in everyone's eyes, which is encapsulated in what the little kids, the little kids are doing at the end of the movie, is he's inspiring them. He's the legend of Luke Skywalker, mm-hmm. the person we always wanted him to be and knew that he could be, and he becomes that legend for the entire galaxy of people who are fighting up and trying to rise up. And when that little kid is like, you know, he's force sensitive, and he's like, he's, it just says that these legends and this myth goes far beyond just this personal story. Like it reaches out amongst the galaxy and that's in it. It just becomes who we've always wanted Luke to be and who he should have been. He lost his way and he came back and he did give his life to do that because doing what he did exhausts him and he dies. So even though he doesn't personally go out there and get laser blasted to death, he does give his life to, to do that. And I think it's an cra- incredibly powerful moment. Uh, well, okay, so let's let me, let me I'll touch on the Luke thing. Then I want to go back on on something that you mentioned earlier. But since we're on Luke, let's stick on there for a second. I'm I'm fifty fifty on on what I I'm I'm of two minds on how everything ended there because while I wanted to see something more from him on a Jedi level, action level, lightsaber level. I do appreciate him mastering the force and, and giving himself up like that. And I, I, I get that. And it, 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 that is cool. So I can't, I don't hate that to happen. But at the same time, I, I felt let down because, again, I just, I wanted to see something different. I think everyone wanted something different. But we saw a different part, which I can't hate because it is a pretty powerful moment where he's able to, to do something. It's just the fact that these new force powers are now like just so out of control. It's like, oh, now you can actually project yourself and hand off a pair of dice that has no bearing to anything in the story, and she can hold on to it, and then she drops it, and then he picks it up and drops it, and then Kylo Ren picks it up. It's like, wait a minute. And so that does that whole thing just bothered me, like just after that happened. But I also knew subconsciously that wasn't Luke when he first comes on the scene, especially when he pulled his lightsaber out. I was like, well, well that's not him. 
because the lightsaber just got blown up right before oh, that plus happened. He's, he's significantly, he's projecting himself significantly younger. Oh, yeah, and he's got a Rogaine beard now, and he's got a haircut, and, you know, he looks a lot younger, yeah, he, obviously. He's you know. put himself in a position of, right. you know, who Kylo remembered him is, who, because he didn't want Leia to see him the way he is now. Yeah. Obviously, he doesn't want her to see him like that, and then it also fucks up with Kylo's head. And um, and it, from a writer, from a writing perspective, too, I thought about it as, if, and I think this is smart on Ryan Johnson's part, is if you put Luke there, physically there, mm -hmm. your choices become limited because he can't kill Kylo right? because then you take away Ray's yep. arc of the story. Right. And he can't lose to Kylo because then you'd be like, what the fuck? Right. Can't lose. Yeah, no, no it's, it's almost like based so, upon what the screenplay was saying, that's what had to happen. It was in service of the screenplay. He had to, he, can't, he could not be there. And I get that. Plus, his thing was sunk in the ocean for however many years. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like that he held the, the, the door of like the uh, he had like pieces of the of the X wing were like yeah. stuck on shit. Right, right. Like that was great. But but thematically, but then again, thematically, I'm like, even if even if that's what I, how he wrote it that way, it still is to me. It is even much that more powerful that he did it in the way that he did. He didn't kill anyone. He didn't hurt anyone. He upheld his Jedi beliefs, and he still saved everyone, and he cemented, he, and he carried on that tradition for a whole new generation of people who, you know, want to be Jedi or just follow the Resistance. Yeah, no, and I and I, and I get it. There, there, there is validity to what he did at the end. Um, so with Luke, let's touch on something here quick because I think that it does a great disservice to who Luke Skywalker is by encapsulating what he was going to do with Ben based upon who Luke Skywalker is. Luke Skywalker would never have tried to even think about killing Ben Solo by seeing something inside of him like that. In fact, he would have been so strong-headed that he did it with Vader that he'd be able to do it to Ben, and Ben was so strong that he could do it yeah, by himself. I, I totally disagree with that. And, I mean, that's who Luke is, man. That's who Luke is. That's who Luke was 40 years ago. That's who Luke was 40 years ago. You're talking about a guy who... His his father was the was the evil ruler of the of the world, mm -hmm. and then when he was able to bring him back, the guy died right in front of him. Mm -hmm. But he still saved everything. Him. He, everything he did after that, did he? I mean, yeah. look at all the death and destruction that he caused. Yeah, but he saved. So, him. He brought him okay. back to the light, and he got rid of the emperor for that. Yeah, I mean, in his dying moments. Sure. You know, and then everything that he did post since then, and have his own Jedi temple and teach people, produced. Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren, if that's who they are, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, there isn't anything, I mean, Luke goes on this journey in the beginning, all starry out of the New Hope, and really everything that's come his way out of taking this uh, journey has been a lot of it for naught, and a lot of it just causes him a lot of pain and suffering. So he, so he, I he does totally one bad thing. He, he, does one, to. he does one thing. He gets he almost kills Ben, and then Ben destroys his, his thing, and... That mistake caused him to turn his back on his sister and the rebellion, and it just—it's. I, I mean, Everything there's. Come up I, I don't agree with with handling Luke like that. I think it goes against even what Mark Hamill says what Luke should have been doing at that point and what his growth would have been. Yeah, there's going to be growth to a character, but turning his back on everybody because he made a mistake about trying to kill Ben is, I, I think, a great disservice to the mythology to me, of that, what Luke is. To me, that's to me that's totally who Luke is. As Luke was always the impulsive. Oh, I don't want to do this. I want to quit. Oh, well, now I like this now. Oh, well, now he's always been that impulsive, such and such. And then who know, he might have gone to the island mm -hmm. and been like, I need to get away for a little while. And then through his own thoughts and through his isolation is like, you know what? It's the universe is better off without me because all I do is bring a lot of pain and suffering. And if I'm the last Jedi, I don't need to bring anyone else into this fold and cause any more pain, death and destruction. But I already but created, but I created Ben. Him. I created Ben. I created Kylo Ren, I should say. Sorry. I, I created Kylo Ren. I'm just going to, eh, fuck it. Let somebody else deal with it. Well, if you created that, or should, should he be going out and killing him? Like you said, that's a bad idea. Uh -huh. Or he should be doing what? Take yourself out of the situation so you don't make it worse? Yeah, I, I just, I don't agree with Luke, man. And just like you don't agree with what they did with Han, you know, in, in the last movie on how they... Han, Han went out like a chump. Yeah. He went out like a chump. He may have. He may have. <laughs> I may have, but he felt like Han, that, though. To to me, to me, he that was totally streetwise Han Solo, who went back to being a smuggler, acting like 
trying to act like he was 30 years ago, like he was going through a midlife crisis. I felt that was <laughs> it's kind to, of funny, to, actually. <laughs> to, to show to show a character achieve no no growth whatsoever. And then uh, he's estranged from Leia when they meet again. He's that none of that worked for me. And then when he confronts Kylo on the bridge, he's got no. He doesn't have it. Like this is very unhand Soloish. He has zero backup plan in case this goes wrong. None, hey, okay. So first zero. of all, I, I'm not going to try to defend. I've never been a defender <laughs> of the Force Awakens. Okay, you brought up a good point. Um, shortly after you saw the movie, you said, you know, there's not that many great Star Wars movies. So you know, to not like a Star Wars movie is not like. It's not different. So when you follow up with your feeling from that you said earlier, the friendly you got, right, uh, mm-hmm. when you were a kid and what you got from this movie, is that's where I had the opposite experience with it. Because every movie, even the bad ones, the prequels, I mean, the bad ones, even Force Awakens, as much as I loved it when I first saw it, it gave me the feeling of Star Wars. I walked out of the feeling, I walked out of the theater after seeing a Star Wars movie, and it, it was elating to me. And it was... That, that powerful experience of seeing a Star Wars movie. Then, of course, subsequent viewings go from love to hate because I watched 1, 2, and 3 several times. I watched episodes several times, after 7, seven after several times. And after you see them several times, you start to go, okay, but these aren't really good movies. But it still gave me that experience. I have never walked out of a Star Wars movie in my life, even though I don't remember seeing episode 4, or A New Hope for that matter, when I was, you know, that young. And I don't recall the full feeling of seeing Empire because I was only four or five. But I have never walked out of the theater feeling like I have been cheated out of a Star Wars movie. Well, it was. It didn't take me 15 minutes to understand why you don't like it. Oh, like, we, just like the, <laughs> we just like the movies. We like these movies for very different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the reasons I like Star Wars... And I like the stories, and, and I get excited about seeing them, and, and, the, and the feeling they give me is different from your experience with them. Yeah. So, yeah, it stands the reason that something like this, where to me they really – he takes a hard stance on the characters. He's really trying to show progression and choices and how those choices affect where you wind up. And there's a little bit of subversion on – you know, expe- a huge subversion on expectations like he – I love the fact that he takes all that bullshit that J.J. Abrams sets up in the first movie and is like, eh, none of that shit really matters. Let's focus on these characters and see where this goes. And That's true. And, you, you know, know I, I like that. the whole mystery box thing um, by J.J., it's a, that's his thing, right? And A New Hope didn't – it was a standalone movie. You didn't know there was going to be a sequel. It didn't bring right. up questions. It brought up things that you wanted to know about, like the Clone Wars yeah, right. and who his father uh-huh. was, things that you wanted to know more about, but it didn't have like these – these questions like, well, which one is it? Is it this or this? And where you have all these fan theories, it was just like things that you didn't know about, but you maybe one day we'll find out. And we end up getting that information much, much later. But with like, with this movie, I don't, it's like he did it on, it was like this intentional, like, I'm just going to say fuck off to the rest of those movies, that movie. It's like everything that happens in Force Awakens doesn't matter. And he doesn't have to answer those questions though. So some people say, well, why do you have to have him answered? Because Empire didn't answer anything. Well, no, because it, it wasn't no. answering questions. It was a different. It's a different breed. But you didn't Empire have to answer those. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. It brought up more of the questions. But with yeah. Last Jedi to a New Hope or Last Jedi to Force Awakens, it didn't have to answer any of those questions. Personally, I was like, well, why are you? Why are you intentionally saying poo poo to all of this when these things could be answered later? You don't have to answer them all now with with the nothingness that they gave up. Well, I like the fact that, and we we talked about this where I saw Force Awakens. Everyone's like, "Ooh, I wonder who Ray's parents are." And I had said, mm-hmm. "Why? Like, we're we are conditioned now to think that her parents have to be something." Exactly right, and right. that might not necessarily be the case. Yep. And I actually, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big fan, like by the way. Fact. I do want to say I'm a big fan of the fact that her parents are nobody. However, I don't believe they are nobody. Yeah. I believe that was something said. We'll find J.J. Abrams. We'll work something in again. They'll, they He'll will be probably a, do some bullshit with him. I'm still going to stick with the fact I think she's a Skywalker now. I think she's Ben's sister. God, I hope she's not. Right, that's, where I, I'm, that's where I'm going like, to take it. <laughs> I love the idea. What I like the most about this movie is, from an approach standpoint, is you've got to let the, sty- the Skywalker saga not die, but the Skywalkers become the legend. And then... Mm. The new stories about Ray and Kylo, and what he did in the movie is he delineated it down to now the third movie is about Ray and Kylo. Mm-hmm. Whereas in another filmmaker's hands, unfortunately, I think they would have carried like, oh, who's Snoke? 
and how is he going to fit into this? And he would have carried him to the third movie. By getting rid of him and, and allowing Kylo to rise to power, mm-hmm. now you've established this very clear good versus evil dynamic for the third movie. Mm-hmm. It's those two against one another, and I like that. I like that a lot. So the, the, so outside of me feeling not the, the effect that I, you know, and I'm going to call it an expectation because there are eight movies worth of, of feelings that I have after watching a movie. And again, sometimes I end up not liking them as much, but... That's you know, maybe this will be the opposite. Maybe I'll love this movie one day, and maybe I'll finally, I'll finally get it. But I've saw it three times. And I don't get it. But um, it, it's it's. I didn't find the characters. Yes, Kylo Ren was conflicted in the first movie, and he changes in this movie to be now he's in charge. Uh, I hate the Hux character. I'm so disappointed in Finn not being able to do anything of substance in these movies. Uh, Poe Dameron, I felt, had an interesting arc where now he's, instead of the hotshot guy, he's going to be the eventual leader. So there's a nice eventual thread for him. But, you know, you, you add in Rose, you add in Finn almost sacrificing himself, which I thought was like, oh my god, they're finally going to do something! Oh my god! And then, oh no, because it, it, in the screenplay, Luke has to come in, and if he sacrifices himself, then Luke's sacrifice means nothing. So it was all in service of the screenplay, which is what I'm surprised that you like about it. I don't know. I like that moment because it speaks to the idea of war and that when you get into when you get into combat and a lot of you read a lot about this too and and all these combat combat um, chronologies and and autobiographies is that it becomes when you're actually in the in combat it matters less about defeating the enemy and saving the person who's with you Mm -hmm. and that's what even though her line. Some can argue it's a little corny. Oh, every she's line not, that she says she's, is bad. She's not trying to. She wanted to save him. She wasn't interested, and in, it had nothing to do with the overall fight. She was saving his life, and I like that. And is it? I I think the biggest problem is, and I think one of the hurdles that Johnson had to overcome coming out of Force Awakens is, originally, from what I understand, Poe and Finn were the same, were the same character in the original. Right, that makes a lot of sense. And then they divided them yeah. for whatever happenstance, and they brought Poe back to life. So now you've got you got these two guys, and it's like, what the fuck do I do with these two people? You know? Yeah. And, no. Yeah. And I and I, I think nothing, I think though. he I think he made I think he made some. I understand what he's trying to do with Canto Bright, but and I'm the first to admit those scenes don't work. Ugh, no. On a lot of levels. No. Nope. So you know, but there's so much more in the movie that I absolutely adore. That I'm able to forgive that, and uh, Poe. There's a lot of things in the movie that I think came out of looking at the Force Awakens and the way that Johnson, may, you know, may or may not approach things. He's a more understated kind of guy, so I was very interested to see what he do with blockbuster material. Is how do I get myself out of these freaking writing situations? Like, okay, so he he sends Ray to the island in the first movie, so obviously your expectation is, oh, she's going to get trained by Luke. Mm-hmm. Okay, you set that up. Well, there's not a, not a whole lot of ways you can get out of that at that point. You know what I mean? And then so Finn, and then Finn's uh, Finn's in uh, you know he's in a coma, so he's just going to come out of the coma, and then he's going to have to do something. Poe is still alive. Um, you've got Snoke is set up as a mystery. Who is he? And uh, Ray has already defeated Kylo in combat. So what's the conflict for the next movie? They can't face off again because it's going to be silly. So there's all these things that have happened in Force Awakens that go into the second movie create a barrage of narrative issues. And I think that he handles them very well and he goes in opposite directions. That makes sense. Like when he kills – when he kills Snoke, I was like, fuck yeah. Like I just leaned forward like I can't fucking believe he just did that. Yeah, it was a surprise it for sure. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And then that scene, and again, getting down to who the characters are, which is seen his real focus in this movie is Ray, is Ray and uh, Kylo. Is um, Kylo cements himself as who he is, and Ray realizes that she can't trust this guy as far as force she can force throw him, and then it becomes about their struggle, and it's and it's encapsulated in their fight over the lightsaber. Um, now, yeah, was, I could talk about it for a while. I mean, I just I just love the movie. I just love the movie. When it comes down to it, I, 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 I could not get past the humor. I could not get past the the fact that I, I felt that it was shitting on the legacy of what Star Wars was to make new stuff, just to make new stuff happen because he was trying yeah, to make his own movie. How did they shit on it, though? I, I mean, they shit the, on it, though? The, I don't understand. I, I, there's so many things. I mean, there's so many aspects of it where, I mean, the like 
the, the way they're using the Force now, it's just, it was just like, okay, I get there's new Force powers. Every movie, every story, George Lucas had to create new things for the for the, for the Jedi's to use that we haven't seen before, uh, and changes were made. But and I get that there's new Force powers, but the fact that you can, you know, touch each other through the Force. And I mean, I just I, I was having a, such a hard time with all of that. The fact that the humor just kept going, him throwing over his lightsaber over his shoulder. There's just so much. The Luke character, what I it just was off for me. There's so much about that I just could not get behind it. And then every time I watched it, I tried to watch it with a different sir, a different eye. First time I'm watching it was brand new. I'm like, holy crap, this is not not, not a oh okay. Second viewing, I was like, okay, let's see if I hate it as much as I thought I did. And the third one, I was like, all right, let's just watch it for fun because my kids are here and we'll see how they like it. And, um, of course, they liked it because Yoda was in it and the Porgs and the Adit Walker. So that's all they needed to see <laughs> for them to like it. From a, from a thematic standpoint, if Luke were to start the story as Luke Skywalker, he's got nowhere to go. So when he comes out at the end, it's like, well, okay, he did that. he's got to bring himself back. You know? I, I just I didn't feel anything in this movie, man. I didn't like the character choice. I didn't like where the characters were going. I just... It felt like anti Star Wars movie to me. And that's why I walked out not even enjoying the experience of it. And that's the first time in eight movies. Even the bad ones gave me that experience, the Star Wars experience. And that's something that has been bred in me since I was one is the feeling of well, Star Wars. It's, it's unfortunate because I think this movie nails it. It, 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 crushed, it crushed my viewing. It cr after, after 40 years in, in eight movies. Then, then, you're, then you're not a fan. Then you're not a fan. You're an armchair fan. The feeling I got from every one of those was the complete opposite of this movie. And that, so one that, and movie, one yeah. movie, and you're, and you're done. Well, now I don't really care where the story's going. Because I didn't, I don't you're feel the story. Then no, you're, you're I, a I'm fan. a bigger fan than most people out there. And, it, and, and, it. and it, crushed, it crushed what Star Wars is to me. It crushed the mythology. It, cr it, it created something new. Because he wanted to create something new, he created his own Star Wars thing. If he wants to do this for the new Star Wars trilogy he's doing, I'm all for it. Make the changes you want to make and do something different. But he's taking something that's been already... Why follow up The Force Awakens with something so radically different if you're already introducing the lore or the, the nostalgia of it? And then if you're creating something so different, why the fuck do you keep going back to Empire Strikes Back and making it so fucking counterpoint and then, oh, we're, we're going to make cute little clever twist instead of making it the same thing. We're just going to make a twist to it. I mean, that, that was just... It was just... I had no appreciation for this movie at all the entire time. From minute one. From when Poe Dameron's second joke... And then after that, he kept going. I was like, oh my God, it's fucking Disney. Here we go, Disney. You got yourself into it. Marvelized humor. Fantastic. That's not even near as goofy as Return of the Jedi. Well, goofy is one thing, but... Or, the, I or mean, Phantom Menace, for God's sake. Yeah, like I'm saying, I, I'm not going to defend movies that aren't that good. I, Phantom Menace is not that good of a movie. Neither is Attack of the Clones. is arguably my worst and my least favorite. But I enjoyed them when I saw them. They were an experience. They were Star Wars. The bad as the movies were, the more you watch, the more you realize, oh, that's not a very good movie. But it gave me the experience of what Star Wars is. Oh, well, it's unfortunate you don't like it. It is. And yeah, I mean, uh, I, had a, I had a long conversation with Bob yesterday, and he kept saying, well, quit trying to make me uh, not like it. And I'm like, well, quit trying to make me like it. Because <laughs> it goes both ways. Yeah, because when I watched it, I was like, yeah, I understand why Jay doesn't like this. But, uh, but I think it's fucking great. And yeah. I saw reasons why I thought you would like it. I am surprised you liked the story. I thought that was one thing that you wouldn't like, but I thought you would like the different changes that they made. Because you're also the one who wanted to change Han Solo from finding the Falcon, uh, getting the Falcon from Lando. You wanted to change the... When we were writing that screenplay back in the day, and you wanted, to find, hit, you wanted him to find the Falcon some other way. And it goes against what the, the basis of what Han Solo's character is. Much like I feel the same way about this movie, it goes against what Star Wars was and what the mythology is and what the lore is and what Star Wars really truly means to people. I th but, yeah, but I think it totally strengthens that and stands and builds up these people as legend and puts them as legend in other people's minds. I think it could have been done a lot better. It inspires them. I, I, I think it, I saw a lot of missed opportunities where I was like, oh, I hope it goes this way. I think it goes this way. And they always kept going to a direction. I was like, yeah, I just, I'm not into this. I just, I don't care about what's going on. I felt yeah. nothing for the characters. Yeah. Except for Poe, I was like, oh, he's kind of, he's got something going. He's better than the first movie, of course, because all he was was a pilot in the first movie. Well, he was actually <laughs> not in the first movie. Or right there, bring, bring him back he in. Came back. Yeah. yeah. I, I really, th I, I was really hoping that Finn would, because I like Finn as a, as an actor. I like him playing the role, but he has nothing. I'm just like, oh, God, I wish they would do something with his character that really substantial. Yeah, I thought they he, had a moment um, there. I mean, he gets a short, he's a good, that, that's a good actor. Who's never given much to work with, no. but he's when, but when he's on screen, he's very engaging. 
That's what I'm saying. His he, story, yeah, he is. And his story starts out so good with him escaping the ship with Poe and getting down to the surface, and then he finds BB-88, and you're like, all right, look, I can follow this guy. But then by the middle of the movie, you're like, okay, he's just hanging out. <laughs> but yep. but he, has, he has one of the best, I'm going to use a lightsaber moments, one of, not the best, one of the best, I'm going to use a lightsaber moments in the whole uh, series when they're in the forest and, and Kylo tosses Ray, and he's like, you can't do that to my friend, and he just grabs a lightsaber and lights it up. That's right. a pretty badass moment that he he pays the price for that. Oh, he sure does, obviously. yeah, yeah. But um, but he just doesn't have. That's the whole thing about the movie, like the Force Awakens and this movie is. I don't go into the next movie like, oh, what's going to happen to Finn? I don't care. So is Han Solo? Is that the last? Star Wars movie until the next one comes out. Yeah, this one it comes out in the summer, and then um, yeah. it'll be two years until Episode Nine. So that Episode Nine will probably be winter again, I would imagine, December of two thousand twenty. December twentieth. December twentieth. Two thousand nineteen. Yeah. So 19. we'll have. So we're gonna have. I think we won't have a, a movie every year. Then we'll just have a, a six months after this one. We'll have Han Solo, and then we'll have a whole year and a half before we get to. The J.J. The Abrams one. I don't understand why they didn't immediately push Han Solo till next Christmas. Right, especially with the trouble like they had. They're yeah. fighting, like fighting to get this release date. It almost feels like they've written the thing off. But Yeah, yeah uh, I don't know, man. I'm not looking forward to that one at all, just based upon what's happening. So, uh, But it's also kind of funny that they, with the humor in this movie, that they were so offended by the humor that they were bringing in the Han Solo movie, talking about the directors, Lord and Miller, you know, I was like, oh, wow, what, what, were, the, what were they I really doing they, with that movie? <laughs> I think they were more, what's his name, was more upset they were improvising and getting off of the screenplay. And, were, and he was like, they're not, they're not reading my, they're not doing my dialogue and not doing this, because they, they were improvising. Yeah, that's and right, that's what I heard, yeah, they were, they were just completely ad-libbing it. And uh, I'd like to see what this kid can do as Han Solo, I just bring in Han, Ron Howard in, you know, it just doesn't really give me any confidence that it's, but I like the kid, I like to see what he looks like as Han Solo, I like to see what they did. But again, I hope they don't just. I hope they're telling a story about Han Solo. I hope they don't just go with everything that we've known, because that's what George Lucas ended up doing. Was you get to see everything that we've heard about, and there was things we we really wanted: the Clone Wars, Anakin's turn, Jedi being killed. But I don't want to see him in the first movie if there's more than one Han Solo movie. I don't want to see him win the Falcon, meet Lando, befriend Chewbacca. I don't want to see him do all of that in the same movie. It just seems like it just it's too much fan service in that regard. You know, tell a story, have some of that in there. But don't don't show everything in one movie. Like don't show I everything I, in there. I thought I read something that they they compared it to a heist movie, which would be cool. Oh, that'd be cool because I mean that that, that yeah. fits him. What do you know? It's a smug. He's a smuggler. He's a he's a thief in a way, right? It's kind of, well, he's not a thief, but he's a smuggler. So, oh, by it'd the way, cool. it'd be cool if it was like if it was, if it was like smoking the bandit, but in space. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I yeah. I mean, I, who knows? Maybe he's bound it down. Castle run and trucking. We got a long way to go and a short they, time to get there. Come on, they bandit. Bum, they can have a bumbling imperial guy. Right, exactly, right? Yeah. So, and Ooh, well, damn you, damn you, Han Solo. By the way, my last comment about this movie, um, when we talk about how they keep bringing back the past, right? You know, you always like to make those member berries stick. When they're talking about this gambler who's good at everything and... This, that really bad thing with Maz Katan with her doing something on the television or whatever, or the iPhone. Um, I was like, oh, God. I forgot Benicio Del Toro was in the movie because I just it, I glossed over that. And I was like, oh, God, don't be Lando. Don't be Lando. Don't be Lando. Don't be Lando. <laughs> don't be Lando. And then when they oh, finally, I was like, oh, he's not Lando. Thank God. Oh, it's right. Benicio Del Toro. I forgot he's in the movie. <laughs> that'd be pretty bad. Because, Bring I mean, that's what you don't want to see. Is Billy D. Williams still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he does the voice work for the Star Wars Rebels Lando character. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah. I, I, there was a lot of fan theories about because the Rebels has such a, it, it's it's so Star Wars that they were gonna do something with one of those characters, and you would see one of those characters in these next movies. And so far, like if you're like Ezra Brigger, the guy who was the young Jedi who's being trained, like he might be Snoke, and all these different things, these theories, and. Uh, so far, I thought Rogue One would have one of them in there just because because it ties right into Rebels. And I was surprised they didn't have anybody in Rebels in the movie at all. And I was like kind of shocked by that because it would be a great tie-in. It's still very interting to me that, and this is obviously a stylistic choice on 
Gareth, uh, Gareth Edwards, is he made the visual effects look like the model work from the original films. Yeah. yeah. And when you look at, even though the special effects in Last Jedi are absolutely top notch, yeah. the way that, because they look like models in Rogue One, it looks more, to me, it's more realistic. But I don't know if that's because I grew up looking at stuff that way, and that's how I like to see light reflecting off objects and so on and so forth, and when things have weight. But I prefer that. I think that's what a lot of people really liked about that movie is the fact that it looked like the original Star Wars movies. Yeah, the prequels yeah, looked yeah. great because of the digital effects and it was like shiny and all that nonsense. But <laughs> it, you know, it, it was in the Star Wars universe, but it was all digital. This looked like real things that were tangible that you could touch. You know, yeah. it was like it's cool, like seeing Luke oh. walk onto the Falcon and touching the Falcon is something that you didn't get in those prequels, right? Ah, yeah, you know, those are things we talked about before. Like we were, you know, we've always mentioned that, but um, it's just funny, man. This is, we, you know, we had this year and we had these last three months with these big four movies, and it's funny that I liked everything up to the one that I expected to like the most. It, it's it, it is a movie about oh, failed God, expectations. I finally watched all of. Justice League. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I don't like that movie. Yeah, I did. I knew you wouldn't like it. It's. I thought you would have fun yeah. with it, but uh, it, I really. It has some. Movie. It has some neat little moments in it, but it's just so. It goes so. It goes so abruptly from. It needed more time to cook. Like it goes from obvious Snyder, grim Snyder universe scene to two to three minute insert of happy go lucky waiting scene, and then back to grim. And I was like, oh, this poor movie. It suffers like, but, from, I, 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 it's, I think it's, the, exactly, I think they, it suffers from uh, the production company making them have, you know, certain criteria they had to fit. And I think it would it would also greatly be um, uh, more watchable with like an extended cut, like the Batman vs. Superman Ultimate Edition, right? It, it expands upon some of the scenes. What are, I didn't, um, I only watched it the one time, but I don't understand the end like Clark is walking through Metropolis, mm -hmm. and then he hears people, and then he busts out of his yeah. shirt. You know. Yeah. Okay, so are we forgetting that everyone knows he died? Right. Yeah. There, there is that aspect. Like, okay, so you're at his farmhouse. So wait, is do, do they know he's Clark? Or you know, it's like it's like. So I, like Clark's should he have a twin brother? No one knew about. Right. Him? Right. 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 So like, it's interesting um, because he came back alive. Superman's back alive. So is he still trying to be Clark? Because if that was both... just it. Like the yeah. last shot, even though I know in Wayden's mind he's like, "Well, I need to have this. I want to make this hero shot." Yeah, and end the movie that way. From a narrative, perspective, it didn't really kind of make no sense. sense. No, it didn't make sense. It makes no sense at all. Right, yeah. and that's one of these movies where I can't. I'm not. I'm never going to defend last. Uh, not last Jedi, um, uh, Justice League, or Batman vs Superman. But it was it was a great experience watching. I had a lot of fun with it. Is as, as flawed well, as they defend. are. I can defend Batman vs Superman. Like I've I've gotten in some, not heated, but I've gotten into arguments about Batman vs Superman, and I'm like, look, I see your point, but it has all this other stuff going for it, and at least it tries to be different, and it's of one whole, and it's of one vision. Yep, yep. Whereas, unfortunately, and I think I said this to you on a like on a WhatsApp message, mm -hmm. is Justice League, even even what is obviously Snyder is it feels like all the hate thrown at him for Batman vs. Superman, mm -hmm. which he obviously put a shitload of time and energy into. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Oh, they yeah, shot sure. that thing. They shot that thing in Michigan for like over a year, uh -huh. I thought. And to just get shit on the way that he did by everyone, including the studio. It takes a toll. His energy, his energy level going to the Justice League was like, yeah. okay, well, I'll just shoot. And, you know, one, another thing that hurts, I think, the Justice League is not having Hans Zimmer, Junkie XL. Have you seen some of the clips on YouTube where they they use they take clips of Justice League? Oh no! And then they'll lay in Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL's music. Oh no! Oh, I'll send you a couple. It's oh, fucking badass. See that? Bob like, Bob brought that up yesterday. He's like, that's very it's missing from the movie. Is that music? Because I was yeah. talking, we were talking about it. I said, yeah, Craig always talks about it as in a rock opera, and he goes, wow, that's interesting, you know. And I'm like, think about it, man. There's that the stepping of, of of him going into the ship with the music. It just it's everything so on key. And he goes, it's missing from the Justice League. You don't hear the music at all. I'll send you a couple clips. There, there. There's one. One of the best ones is when he comes back to life. Uh, yeah. Like when he when he's outside of everything else in the scene, music wise, mm -hmm. when he comes down and lands on his monument, mm -hmm. 
it has that really nice Hans Zimmer string music, or piano music from the Man of Steel. Oh. Dun, dun, okay, okay. Dun, so, okay, dun, but that, that's the one thing people are giving... looking around. The one thing that people are giving that movie a lot of credit for is with music-wise, I'm talking Justice League, is... They're saying that Danny Danny Elfman used like his original yeah, themes, and I'm like, yeah, you can barely yeah. hear the themes though, like bat, the Batman theme. It's such theme. a weak. It's such a weak score. It is. It's and, so weak. And let's not remember. Let's not forget that he doesn't like Batman's score might be a better score for him, but that's about it. They're very non remember non memorable. I mean, he has like a really. I mean, he, he hit the Batman theme out of the park mm-hmm. back in 1989. Eighty mm-hmm. nine, baby. Yeah. Okay, like it's been a long time since then. He doesn't have the energy as a composer anymore to pull something like this off. Oh, he's not interesting. He's not relevant anymore. I mean, he's just not. Yeah. And I'm not even gonna say it's just. I'm not trying to be like an ageist. He's just out of the game. He is. Yeah. It just. And it, you get someone like Junkie XL who's got no fear. Yeah. He's Junkie just, XL's he's just got creating. no fear when it comes to. He's yes, creating, he's man. Just, he's just. Yeah, he's just out creating. There. Food and Can I make? One? I would have loved. It. Go for it. Go, I, go, I need go, to make this one understand. comment. I don't want to go back to the movie, but we li- I listened to the soundtrack most of it for The Last Jedi before uh-huh. the movie. I yeah. did not hear it except for a couple sequences. Maybe that's good because you're not supposed to notice the music, but I did not hear the music that I heard before I saw the movie. I. It's funny you bring that up because I will say that I've listened to the soundtrack uh-huh. on YouTube. YouTube. Yep, me too, yeah. And there's a lot of really great passages, but... It's definitely not played up in the sound mix as heavy no. as the original Star no, Wars. No, no, no. Now, there's a couple moments. Like, when Luke's walking out to the battlefield, I uh-huh. mean, there, that's a, it, oh, that actually that's gave that. me goosebumps. That's fucking... Like, I, I can't... And I'm sorry. Let me just say one more thing <laughs> about Star Wars. I don't hate it anymore. I very much dislike it, but there is some stuff to love, and there's some good stuff in it. I got to give it some due. It's not like I just I'm never going to watch Star Wars again. It really pissed me off to the point where I wrote that review and like maybe it's over for me and maybe it is. Maybe it is now for my kids for me. But the fact is is that scene him walking out with that music was dun, iconic. Dun, 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 dun. And it's that big master of him walking out uh-huh. into the light. Yeah, yeah, into yeah. the light. I mean, right. thematically, if anybody who denies that Rain Johnson didn't put a lot of fucking thought in this movie, right. just isn't just isn't watching it. No, no, he didn't. And he yeah, steps yeah, out of the I darkness. I may not like it, but yeah, in, I, I agree. Into into the light to face off the Empire, and it's all behind him, and it's just like, this is who Luke Skywalker. This is the Luke Skywalker we've always wanted to see. Yeah. He's gonna face down yeah. the Empire or the First Order, whatever the hell they're called. On his own. Can I give you another you know, thing about that that I liked a lot is just the little thought process of Luke holding his lightsaber. It was just like he would have held it in Jedi and in Empire. It's very just kind of it very – it's one of those stances that's just very simple. It's not one of the elegant – you know, like when you see like Qui-Gon or they always had like different styles that they showed in the Jedi movies. But he just has that real simple stance and it was like, oh, they kept with that. He's, he's, got a, yeah. he's got a samurai stance. Yeah, right. And it's and it and again it shows you it shows us and it shows everyone that Luke understands who he needs to be, and he that's who he's projecting. Yeah, and he knows. Oh, yeah, I get he, that, under, yeah. he understands who he needs to be. He's just lost his way. No, yep. and he when he comes back and is able to project that. It's to me. It's just a fucking perfect moment. It's a nice when moment. he walks out. I'm sorry. When he when he walks out, and he does the whole. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was in my row. I was like, yes, that's yes. What, now, see, that that's yes. that's the one thing I laugh at and love a joke like that. That's the stuff I like when it comes to uh, the humor part. It's it's the other stuff I don't care for. But I like that moment. I liked him doing that. As much as people thought it was stupid and corny, I'm like, oh, oh that was no, great. I it was fuck, a, ni- it's a nice Skywalker. taunting moment. Like, yeah, what do you got? He's so trolling Kylo. <laughs> he's just totally trolling him. He's oh. troll. He's trolling Kylo just like. In the same way that Yoda was, the Yoda scene is so good. When Yoda's just fucking with Luke's head, like, oh, you read them, you have page turners there or not. Like, you didn't read these books. Like, who are you? <laughs> like, who are you kidding? Like, nobody reads them. Right. Like, what's wrong with you? And uh, the shitty saint. Yeah, when, you, when you go back and watch Empire, I was watching Empire yesterday, Yoda says something to him that encapsulates a lot of who Luke Skywalker is in that movie. And in this movie, he says, he goes, all I see is, God, what's he say? He says, um, basically, like, you're not focused on who you are, 
always on where you yeah. always on what you're doing, you right. know. And he's like, and that's who Luke is, and that's who he always was. Like he loses sight of who he is, mm-hmm. and Yoda's got to come back and be like, hey, like what's wrong with you? Like, get back in the fight, man. And like, you know, and um, and everyone's watching him, and the scene, and then when he's fighting, uh, he's fighting Kylo, and you start to realize that he's not there, mm-hmm. and the the lights coming up on the camp and everyone's stepping forward mm-hmm. and they're stepping into the light. Like it's just, yes, yeah, visually the visual, um, language in the movie to me is just great. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely some nice moments. Um, but it was, it was, it was definitely one of my favorites is that. And then, uh, the, the lightsaber battle with the, um, the, the cool ass guards, those red dudes, the Praetorians. I like that the guards, I like that someone's guards, Finally, in the Star Wars movies, were a threat. Actually, the General Grievous Finally. ones, General Grievous's droids, put up a lot of fight for the Jedi every time they fought them. So they weren't necessarily always easy, but they did put up a big fight. They did, and I, I've always hated about that scenes is that, um, I was never a fan of outside of the first the Darth Maul lightsaber battle. And uh, a lot of what happened between Kenobi and Anakin is I always felt that the the choreography, even though skilled looking, was could have been better. Like in when they fight Grievous's guards in the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm enjoying this, but I thought it could be better. Like, why are you taking so long to beat these guys? (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like you're fighting robots. They obviously don't have any skill. So you just gotta chop them up like zombies, right? Like, yeah, was... yeah. They're 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 yeah. That's to say, I I am not a, a Star Wars apologist necessarily. I'll stick up for the movies when I need to, but there's not great stuff in all the movies. That's what's so bothersome about my viewpoint of the Last Jedi is I'm upset that I don't like the movie. It bothers me that I don't like the movie. It really bothers. That's why I saw it three times. <laughs> Okay, so Craig, maybe you should maybe you should have gave us some room to breathe. Maybe, maybe, yeah. and you know what? I, what I'm gonna probably do is because of the, of the fucking nerd I am and my Star Wars love is I will I will probably go see it again before it leaves the theater and just to go see it maybe with some fresh eyes and maybe I'll find enjoyment in it and maybe I'll see what you saw. Maybe it'll still be in the same place. I don't know. Oh, you but, know what? Uh, you know what? I've got to say one last thing is that uh, yesterday the, uh, the the project manager here was like, hey, um. Would you mind going to Reston in like two to three weeks? What's, what's that? Look like forward, to, like Reston, Virginia. Oh, where, well, where the corporate office is. Yep. And the first thing in my mind was, what's releasing? I'll be, I'll <laughs> be able to, I'll be able to see Star Wars on a big screen. I'm oh. like, yeah, go yeah. ahead and send me. Nice, nice. Because it'll still be out. Because so I know the first thing you're thinking of, no matter what time of year, is what's playing, what's being yeah, released. Like, what am I going <laughs> to? Like usually, usually January. Usually January is a weak spot, so let's go back to January 2017, Jason Capcom. <laughs> yes, uh, there we go. What, what came so uh, I think it was a pretty good year, but January was not a good start, much like any year. I mean, you know, January is usually typically your worst start, I think, the You're movie season. Around. Yeah. Dumping. One thing that came out was Split that I didn't see. Now, now, now oh, let me, quickly, let me say this. I just watched Unbreakable with Tina. Two or three uh-huh. days ago. She never seen it, and we were, yeah. we were arguing about what to watch. I go, fuck off, we're watching this. And she goes, I might like uh-huh. it. I'm like, it's a good movie. That's a damn good movie. Unbreakable is so good. I really enjoy it. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I really like that movie. I do. It's For some reason, it's been on cable. Oh, has it? And I haven't seen the whole thing all the way through, but okay. I've seen it in bits and pieces. And I still always love the scene where... Uh, one thing Shamalian used to be used to be used to be a fucking expert at was his character introductions yes which is key to a film yeah, especially a superhero a good movie. Story. yeah yes and the way he introduces sam jackson's character not when he's a baby because you don't know who he is yet, mm-hmm. but when he's in the store selling the artwork and talking about what it means and so on he's like yeah. oh yeah what is some kevin's gonna love this and yeah 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 who's how old is kevin get out get out <laughs> I know. There's like, it's a good movie. It's a lot of good stuff. It's disappointing after I saw it that I'm like, ah, he kind of fell off after signs. He just uh, he's not he's not a, you know he's just not there anymore. But uh, he drank his own Kool Aid. Exactly. Yeah, but, but the it's, reason it's, I let's actually I like. Oh, go ahead. The go reason ahead. I brought it up with Split it was is a direct is a is a it's a it's in the same world. 
It's, it's in the same world that you don't realize till the very end of the movie. And if you hadn't watched Unbreakable in a couple of years, mm-hmm. you probably would have probably would have went right over your head. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, it's not overt at all. It, it's been out long enough. I can tell. Yeah, you. yeah. So I haven't seen it, but I, that's okay. I like Split. It carries the same detriment a lot of his films do, is people act like people in a movie okay. and not in real life. Right. Even though he's trying to show real life, but then by the end, even though it's not a twist. You understand why a certain why the main character acts the way she does, ah. and um, the whole idea that this guy can control his body and control his other selves mm. and so on is interesting. So by the end of the movie, this guy, like basically uh, James McAvoy, who gives an amazing performance, oh really? Okay, keeps saying that he can turn himself into this beast, and that the beast is one of his selves. And he can do this, and it's going to come out, and you're like, yeah, this guy's just fucking crazy. Right. But by the end of the movie, he does turn himself into, like, he transforms physically just enough, not a lot, but just enough to where he's a creature. Okay. He can like, climb on walls. Ah. He can do all this crazy. He's incredibly strong. And so the setup is um, after the girl gets away and all these other things happen is that He's like licking his wounds in this apartment in this like broken place. Like he's like the beast will come out again, you know, and we'll we'll rise up. And then they cut to a diner and they're watching TV and they're saying, and then this man known only as the beast, we we expected it. We're we're not sure if it's true or not true. And people at the diner in the city are like, well, the beast. That sounds that sounds. Why does he call himself the beast? And this guy says, that sounds. Remember that guy who called himself Mr. Glass a few years back. And blo- and the, this yeah whatever happened to that guy and the camera keeps moving and Bruce Willis is sitting there eating oh no shit okay and then he looks up at the TV he looks up at the uh, he's got his uh, remember the work shirt yeah he wore yep. that security guard he's still wearing that yep. security guard thank you he looks up at the TV and he kind of like puts the paper in his arm when he walks out oh so he's very taking, nice very he's nice. taking you know like mental note yeah. of what's going on. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I knew he wanted to do a he wanted to make, make a trilogy out of Unbreakable, and that was like the first act, you know, like of the story. And right. It was supposed right, to be like yeah. the first act of a story was the first movie, and so now he'll at least get a chance to work this guy into another movie. And for uh, for the fans, mm-hmm. the scene where he becomes the Beast, which is very nicely done, mm-hmm. he goes to this train. I can't explain thematically right now, but it's all built up to this point. You're like, oh, yeah, he's getting on the train. He's going away. He's, right. He's going to the singular self. And when he, like, crouches down to become the beast, there's a music cue from Unbreakable. Oh, okay. And you're, and, and I was like, and because I didn't realize, and I was like, that's from another one of his movies. Oh, and, <laughs> interesting. But then okay. at, the end, at the end, when it all comes together, I was like, oh. Yeah. Very okay, so I, I, I do, I've i been passing by it, and I can't watch it with Tina. It's not her interest, but I've got to find a time to watch it now that I've seen Unbreakable recently, and it's, it's going to be a year anniversary since it came out. So, uh, But that that was, I think that's what started the year off, was that was the, one of the uh, one of the. No, movies. you're right. Yeah, yeah you're right, because I was in, uh, I was in uh, uh, Minnesota when I saw that. Movie. Okay. No, I think, I think you'd like it. I think you'd be questioning it as you watch it, but then by the end, as it all kind of comes together, you'd be like, this wasn't so bad. Okay. This is pretty good. And that's what I've heard about yeah. it. I've heard it's not that bad of a movie. So uh, one that I did see, I think the only thing I actually did see new this last January was Hidden Figures, and it's going to get probably Oscar nominations for, for it, and uh, a lot of people said how great it was. I found it to be a very just kind of bland movie about a, cool, a, about very, a cool topic. It was a very paint-by-number screenplay yes. of a, a good topic, but it hit... It reminds me of movies like um, Legally Blonde mm-hmm. and... Uh, what the fuck else? Um, these movies that, like, okay, by the 20-minute mark, this happens. By the 30-minute mark, this happens. Right. And then people are going to get upset, and now they're going to they're gonna achieve something and not be upset, and they're going to prove all the, all the white... Yeah. Men wrong, right. and then and I was like, it was very, you know, uh, predictable. Very paint by numbers. Yeah. Very predictable. Yeah. Um, so that's the way when it's predictable, you're just like, there's no, there's no, you don't have anything attached to it. You're like, because you don't care because like, you already know what's going to happen, and it's just very kind of mundane. It was just very yeah. Dull. Like, I always hate when I see something that has obviously has good production values. Mm-hmm. They have good actors. Mm-hmm. Um, it's competent, very competently made, 
but it's so standard. Right. And so it's so safe. That's the safest fucking movie I yeah. saw all year. It was. It, like it's safe is so, probably the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't take any chances. And then by the time Kevin Costner like breaks the colored bathroom sign off the wall, mm-hmm. I was like, this movie's so shameless. It is. It was. It was. <laughs> it, it had an agenda, unfortunately, and it, that's what I. Unfortunately, when they make movies with an agenda, there's usually never a substance of story that they're trying to tell. Yes, the story itself is interesting, but the story on thematic level was not. You know, like the movie had a lot. The movie could have had a lot to say. It, it, absolutely, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it missed the message it, it was trying to say, just because it was trying to make it. But it's like, I'm good at math. Da, 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 da. And then, like, go to the next scene where people are like, well, who is that girl? They say she's good at math. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's bad. And it's always, it always has that scene, always has that scene where it's like, we just can't figure this problem out. Like, it's just impossible. Then they all go home, and she's like, you know, and she solves it. Yeah. So, you know, the next morning. She's going to have solved it. Like, who wrote this on the board? It's, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. You've seen this movie 30 fucking times. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it just wasn't me. It's know, like they had me. another another story that they did the same thing with. They just put it into this particular, you know, environment. And, oh, you God, know, yeah. Oh, it's bad. So, paper numbers but are the great. One girl, uh, great. The one girl, the one, actress, I forget her name. The one, the one actress is super hot. I think she was in Anchorman 2. Oh, oh. I forget. I only know was Octavia Spencer. That's the only one I can remember that was in it. Yeah, it wasn't her. Yeah, okay. But there's another girl in it who's super hot. I forgot Kevin Costner was in it. Okay, so uh, other than that, for this this month of January, another Underworld movie, which I had no interest to see because what number is it and who cares? Even though Kate Beckinsale is really hot. Um, you know, but it is what it is. A dog's Purpose, I heard, was really good. And about a dog that keeps getting like reincarnated every time. Yeah, dies. yeah. Like, I, mean, I would have. Yeah. Just, just in the same way that you don't like to see films that make you uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Anything with a dog in it, I'll cry. Yeah, okay. So Tina was, I don't I don't mm, go to see those movies. Tina was watching it <laughs> and I was I watched it for maybe ten minutes, maybe less, and I said, No thank you, and I left. <laughs> Cause I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, I am not gonna put myself through this right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna subject myself to this emotional manipulation right now. Sorry. She's like, okay, run away, scaredy cat. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bye-bye. I'm, I'm going to go watch uh, a Western. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, if it's got a dog in it, I'm going to start crying. Right, I know, because you know it's going to The only dog death I think I've not shed a tear on is the dog, because it's, the way it's handled is the dog death in uh, I Am Legend. Yes. Because it's, 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 yes. Because it hits his character so hard. Yes, it's a hard scene. Anytime you see a dog introduced in that kind of a story, you know it's going to die. So it's unfortunate when it does, and you're like, you know it's going to happen, but you're just like, still, it sucks. Yeah. So speaking <laughs> of doggy deaths, a uh-huh. certain film came out in uh, February that we're both big fans yes. of. Yes. It actually happened uh, in the original, though. Yes, but the but the effects have carried over into John Wick Two. Over to John Wick Two, That's which right. was fucking. Badass. That's one of those very rare sequels that not just lives up, but nearly surpasses it. But if it does surpass it, I mean, you know, it was so fun and good. It's just good. It's just a good movie. It takes it takes and, a really uh, interesting creation of a world and just runs with it and just says, "Okay, that was this kind of movie. Now we're going to make it into this kind of a movie." So cool. Right. It's it. It doesn't do the. It doesn't retread old ground. Yes, yes. Which is typical. And, of sequels, which yeah. which could have happened because John Wick is an incredibly simple film. It be- Man very gets much revenge so. for his dog, yes. and you're like, okay, what's the next one going to be? But about? the architecture like, within that was so unique. You know, like well, the creation I, of the world. Well, what what I like that they're doing is in the first movie, he gets back into the world to avenge his dog's death. Well, and his wife, you know, for a lot of reasons. Right. And everyone's like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, you're out. He's yeah. Like, no, no, I got to do this, you know. Yeah. And then the second movie is the repercussions. Right. Of him getting involved. Exactly. Again, right. Always which is fucking, constantly which is running cool. away. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Like, it's not like the first movie had to happen for this one to happen. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. It's Otherwise, he would have been left it. alone. It, it breathes yeah. from life from the, the first movie, which is unique these days. Because like yeah, you say, right. they're just not recreating the same movie or just doing it a different way. They're, it's a different story, you know, a different way to tell the story. It's really cool, man. I was super impressed. I need to, I need to watch it again. I only saw it the one time. And, That's why uh, I like the end of John Wick 2 is after he's – I love when he shoots the guy in the, in the restaurant. Yeah. I just love that. 
but I love when he goes back to his house and there's nothing left and he pulls out a photograph and he's just like, what the fuck have I done? Right. Like, I have totally messed everything up. Yeah. Then they right. come to get him and, he, and then when he's laying, when Ian McKellen is laying the law down for him and you think, and a two, one scene ago, John had admitted to himself he'd made a huge mistake. Uh-huh. But when Ian McKellen lays the law down for him, he says, all right, everyone who comes... I'm going to kill every last right. fucking one of them. Yeah. And he's like, all right, if that's the way you guys want to play. Exactly. Okay. Right. Cause that's who all he right. is. That's who he is. Right. So he's going to continue <laughs> yeah, with that right. as much as he wants to be yes. the nice guy. He's just like, you're pushing me and I'm the badass. That's why you call me the boogeyman. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's how you guys want to play. I got nothing to lose. Exactly. Exactly. Now he has nothing zero to lose. to lose. Right. So yeah. that might've been the best movie of uh, February. And it's, I'm, I'm oh, fantastic. Movie. Out. Yeah. I say might be because I saw get out. And Get Out was very interesting. So you didn't see it. Okay, so uh, Jordan Peele's first directorial movie, right? And uh, Jordan Peele from Key and Peele. And I thought it was super unique. Something that I probably wouldn't watch again because of the way it unfolds. You're like, okay, like like, um, Sixth Sense, it won't play as well the second time, I don't think. You know, I think it loses something from that. But that first viewing is really unique on what they're doing with it. It's like not comedy, but it's like you kind of want to laugh, but you're not sure if you should. It's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable movie. I like that. That's cool. (laughs) But it was cool. And I also saw Lego Batman, which I thought was definitely under, didn't live up to the expectations based upon Lego movie that he's interested in. The Lego movie is one of those, like, lightning struck yeah. kind of deals like right. it had no it had no business being as good as no it, it didn't but then you take a really cool character of the movie as a side character and try to make another movie out of that and it just it was just tiring i was like that much of that it's batman is like, too old it's kind of like making a han solo movie yes i, I hmm. fully concur with that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so another t- movie that came out that I wanted to see, I think it's a Gore Verbinski movie, Cure for Wellness. I watched that did last you? week. You did? How was it? Yes, it's very odd. Interesting, okay. It's very interesting, and it's very... Um, I I hope that one day Gore Verbinski can strike the chord between these odd films. This is a, it's a very odd film, but you can tell... He wanted to make this, and this is his reward for making a shit ton of money with the for the, the studio yeah. with Parts of the Caribbean. Yeah. And I hope he can strike a balance between this film, like these kind of films where it's like it's too odd for the mainstream, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate, and then the big overblown blockbusters, and find that sweet spot right in the middle okay. where it's still a little quirky, but it's mainstream enough to find a, 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 a good audience. Okay. Interesting. Because you know, even... Uh, even Rango? Is that the cartoon? Yeah, Rango? Yeah, yeah. Even Rango felt at times like a little too strange for the kitty cartoon market. Absolutely. You know, it was very unique and, and uh, very, very strange. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw it at the Austin. Yeah, the, yeah. That was, I think, my first oh, movie, th- movie in Austin. Oh, well, that's right. It was. Yeah. And, um, but so, so Cure for Wellness is, well, A, it's got, a, it's got one major thing going against it, which, which killed another movie you saw this last year. James Dehan is the star. Oh. And he's just not he's just not oh, a main character. Oh, now I don't want to he's watch the movie. Not a main character. Yeah. He's just he doesn't have it. No. He no. just doesn't have He's a sec- he's a supporting character. role. Keep him he's there. He's a supporting role kind of guy, yeah. As much as I he like Ben doesn't... Foster, I I kind of think Ben Foster works best. Ben Foster as a knows secondary his character. Place. Yeah. Ben Foster knows where his strengths are. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And he plays well ben there. Foster... He plays amazing there. Ben Foster is in that Warcraft movie. Yeah, and I kind of want to watch that just he, because of that. He plays yeah. he plays the wizard, and he's great as the uh, wizard. Dude, he's awesome, man. He's, he's like awesome one of my favorite actors living right now, and he is can, just fucking he awesome. He is selling the shit out of using his wizard powers. Right? Can you imagine putting him in all the movies <laughs> that you hate? <laughs> like, put him in Kong Skull Island, and now you have a good movie. <laughs> you got a good movie. Yeah, you got a great movie. He's he's that new he's that new guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? But he's and been he, around for a little while. You don't want him. Okay, so uh, let's get to March. We have a big month in March. Logan. Fuck. One of the best Logan, movies of the year. I mean, Logan, it was, w- Logan was a gut punch. I watched it again on the airplane coming back from Florida, and I it had the same, like, oh, man, what a good movie. What a good fucking story. Oh, it was such a gut punch. Yeah, it was such a gut punch. It's so depressing, but so... It, it has that 
that hope at the end, you know, with you know what he does, you know, to set, to you know redeem himself. It's very, yeah, it's a very it's a very stressful movie. It is a very stressful movie, and that's it's it's uncomfortable <laughs> to be sure, but it's so well done on every but it's level. It's very it's very well done. It has a couple things I wish they would have done better, and I think those things I said this before for a lot of films. Some movies are teetering so precariously on being just flat out great that the minor things, the minor um, inconsistencies or bad, like bad scenes stick out like sore thumbs because the rest of it is so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, every time I've, I've watched it three times now and um, I watched it three times now and I hate the scene when in the beginning he goes to the hospital to get the pills for Professor X mm -hmm. and the villain gets in the back of his cab and he's like, hey, Logan would have killed him. He just killed five yeah. guys the night before. And he's already threatened that guy. Like, yeah. Why, yeah. Are, okay. why are you following me and would have killed him? Yeah. Interesting. You know? Yeah. So, so there's... I just don't like that scene. Yeah. But, and that's, but again, I don't like it because I'm like, okay, well, you just, you just showed he's got no problem murdering people right why is he going to tolerate this guy and so in that sense i think it makes a minor it's a big misstep but because the movie's so good a minor misstep is that i don't think they should have shown him being violent in the beginning you didn't need to set the tone that way i wouldn't have shown him being violent until the breakout that's scene. a good point actually it's because, a very cool because, moment but i think you're right yeah because it would have meant a lot more for him to bring himself back out of his yes. self imposed passivity. Ex especially with the Shane motif going over the entire yes, movie. Yes, exactly. That's actually exactly. actually what a what a wasted opportunity that is. Very, and, yeah. Very. That's a great, great point, Craig. That's a really good point. If they would have had him because reserve himself to the point where, you know, where later on it means so much more to see him come out of that, you know, that, right. that, exactly. that passivity. Exactly. Yeah. Because then the scene with the guy would have made sense. Yeah. And you'd have been like, why is he taking shit from everybody? Like, what the fuck? Yep. And then he would have went back to Professor X, and you seen like everything just everything just keeps getting right. worse and keeps right. getting worse. Great scenes with with uh, Ian uh, not, uh, with Patrick Stewart were, were wonderful. Yep. But then the scene, and then the scene where they where they come to get the girl, and they're beating him up would have made more sense. Right. And then when she attacks and he attacks, it would have been like, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, would have been the big moment. So I think they that and again that's one of those things that's like. I wish you would have done it differently, but everything else that I get is so good. Yeah, you get okay. you, you, you're you're forgiving, and you're very forgiving yes. in that regard. And I and I'm very forgiving in a lot of ways too. And th that's one thing that I think I, I would have changed was I didn't like seeing another Wolverine, another Weapon X. You know, at the end for the younger self, it's cool, but I was just like, ah, uh, uh, yeah. I would have liked to see something different there, but that and like I said, it's because every, everything else is so perfect. You're like, ah, I get I, it. It has to happen. Yeah, I think. It's almost like when they wrote the movie, they felt they needed that as a counterpoint to him. And I understand the matter of what they're going for, yeah. but because the rest of the movie stakes feel so personal mm -hmm. and it's so good, by the time you get to that, you don't need it. Right. You don't need that. Exactly. And I wonder I wonder if Mangold at some point was like like we're we're kicking ass on this movie and what we're getting is fucking amazing. Yeah. We don't even need that counterpoint to yeah. him anymore. I, I don't, I don't but, doubt that. But we've over, but we've overcommitted because the I've watched the um, I've watched that Las Vegas scene like countless times, and I remember when I the when when yep. Professor X yep. loses it has a spasm. Yeah, like I remember in the cinema when we saw it, um, saw it at the IMAX opening night packed. Yep, and I don't think anybody breathed during that whole scene. Yeah, it's intense. Like when he finally puts the needle in and the whole cause. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I, that, it's that's so. It's so stressful. That's what I love about a good film, man. Is when it, 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 it's just. It's not just telling you a story. It involves you in it, man. It makes you feel something, right? And but, gives you that. It's awesome. And I will say, I will say this though, and it's it's had the same impact on me every time I watch the movie is, and it rivals some of the best. This is hard for me to say. It rivals some of the more iconic shots in Unforgiven. Oh yes, is, yes. Is when when he does fight the Weapon X, and the it, it, he's there. There the reason the family got destroyed, and everyone's dead. Uh, Professor X is dead. 
you know, the, the other mutant guy's dead. The whole, the house is in chaos. Shit's in flames. He's practically dead. He picks up the girl and he's standing there looking around at what the carnage they've created. And he's just like, why do I keep doing this? Right. Right. And it's like, and the music's like, the music has that hard string on it. And I was just like, it's you know, like it gets you right in the car in the heart. It's like, oh my god, would you please give this guy a break? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same guy who did uh, Marco Bellatrami, who did uh, Three Ten to Yuma, and a bunch more. Since yeah, then. he's great. Yeah, he's, yeah. He uses strings very, very, very well yeah. in a lot of his movies. Uh, yeah, so that was a great start to March. Uh, a bunch of movies I didn't see: uh, Life, Chips, Power Rangers, and Train Spotting Two. Well, I'll tell you what. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to watch uh, Chips. No, no, I'll, I'll never watch Chips I, or Power Rangers for that matter. But Life is pretty good. Life I heard is pretty good. That's the one with the. Uh, pretty good. That's the uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yep. Okay. Jake Gyllenhaal. Now I did see Beauty and the Beast, and I really enjoyed it as much as you can. From seeing that story time and time again, you know. But I enjoyed. It. I thought it was well done, except for the Beast. The Beast looked really bad. Um, he did. Yeah. Because it's been on cable lately, and I finally oh, okay. watched it. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. I, I had a good time watching the story, and then uh, Kong Skull Island was entertaining, but very forget forgettable. Ultimately, pretty disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I, I had a good time watching it, but it had no substance to it. Like after I walked out, I was like, "Yeah, that was fun," but uh, okay. The problem with that movie, I thought, was we talked. We probably talked about it. We did when before. the movie came out. Was was that um, a few more drafts of a screenplay or an outsider, like a third eye look at the screenplay, mm -hmm. could have solved a lot of those problems, and it would have been a good movie. Yeah, like, there, I think there's they a got lot of this potential path. there. Yeah. yeah, they got on this path of separating people right. and trying to get on the other side of the island. They could have really solved that, eliminated a lot of characters, yep. streamlined it. Way you know, too many characters. Uh, you know, and Sam yeah. Jackson becomes a character, caricature. And nowadays, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and, um, but the production values, the special effects. Oh, that looks great. That's what I'm saying. It made scenes, it fun. Great yeah. scenes in it. Um, so a lot of... A lot of uh, Entertaining, but a lot of waste. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, something I won't revisit again, but I'll see the next movie they come out with for sure because they'll have Godzilla in it. Uh, but now, one that I saw on an airplane just recently came out in March was Ghost in the Shell. What did you think of that? I actually, from watching it on the, on, the, on the plane ride, I really enjoyed it. I was surprised. Ooh. I was just kind of passing time, obviously, and I was like, I didn't think, oh, I'll watch this. And it's short change, it's too short of a movie. Like there's a lot of there's a lot going on in that normal story for for Ghost in the Shell, um, but I actually kind of enjoyed. it. I was like, that's actually got a cool story to it. It's just too short. It's like they they just got they got to everything far too quickly. But it was actually a pretty entertaining movie. I was surprised. I was actually really really surprised. Um, now April had kind of a blah of movies. Well, one of them is a big movie, but Fate of the Furious, which I didn't see, which I won't see. The Furious. We're not gonna get it. Yeah, don't let's not talk about that. We've done that I before. Love, I love, I love torturing you. Yes, you with do. Fast the Furious. Free Fire. I saw on. I partially saw on Netflix just recently, and I hate. I hated that movie. It was. It so, looks bad. It's bad. It just looks bad. It's just so not entertaining. It just it, the characters suck, and it just it was horrible. I did see half of the Lost City of Z with Charlie Hunan. And I got to say, the first half was actually pretty interesting. And I, I need to finish it off. I was like, oh, that's an interesting take on what they're doing here. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, but again, didn't really hold my interest enough to want to go back to finish it. And that's it for April. Okay, now we're five months well, in. April, April, April permanently slowed down because of the onslaught coming in May. Yeah, exactly. May uh, and June had, well, especially May. Especially May, but June and uh, July here, I think, uh, both have a lot of shit going on. The next three months are big. So in May, you had Guardians of the Galaxy 2, a big movie. Didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. I saw it again with the boys, and I liked it even less the second time. And I can't stand watching Kurt Russell be Kurt Russell, young Kurt Russell. It just looks so bad. But I love Kurt Russell. <laughs> I hate I hate when they put that CGI sheen on things. Yeah. Like, they're trying to mask him, mm -hmm. so they make everything else look that... Look the same way. Yeah, the cars I, got a, I see you're saying. The car's yeah. got a sheen on it. Yep. She's got a sheen on her. Right. The background's kind of blown out. Interesting. It's point. like I'm, I'm so tired of seeing that aesthetic. Right. It's the tears day though. Man, it's a new thing. It. We got Leia. We had uh, Moff Tarkin. Now we have this. So we're gonna get a lot more of this recently. Uh, but that was a bad, bad version of it. I did not like seeing Kurt Russell in that regard. But um, so let's not talk about that. We talked about enough. Kurt, uh, King King Arthur. I actually enjoyed more than I thought I would. Another Charlie Hunan movie. 
and I enjoyed it. I think we talked about it on the podcast. I was really surprised by it. It was actually far more entertaining than I thought it deserved to be. Um, Baywatch, which I wouldn't see. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man, Tales on the Tale, which I had no interest in. But the last movie of May that we'll talk about briefly here, and we've talked about it in, in, in depth, was uh, Alien Covenant. Which has grown on me over time. Has it? Okay. I haven't yes, seen it since the theater. I really, I really admire... I think it's unfortunate that Ridley Scott, to his own admission, he's uh-huh. already said this, he caved to people wanting to see the alien again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he'd already moved past that. Yeah. So he put alien in the movie when the real stories about the androids... And the yep. movie stories about David being a god and wiping out humanity. Right. That's what the movie's about. Mm-hmm. And those elements are great. Those are some. There's some really thematic moments there. Yeah. And some interesting stuff Good there. Stuff. And then they bring in the alien. You're like, oh, this movie just kind of went the wrong direction now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The last ten yeah. minutes are pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to June. We have Wonder Woman, which we don't need to talk about it in too much detail, other than the fact that great I movie. Really enjoy it. Have great, great fun movie. with that movie. Saw it again and uh, enjoyed it. Just the same. Really enjoyed it. Um, Mummy. I saw, and I wish I didn't. I saw that, and it was awful. It's horrible. Uh, trans- in a way that, in a way that I did not think a Tom Cruise movie. Could I suck know, movie. right? It was. So, he's always so good. And he's just like, and he's bad in it. He's he's, he's bad miscast. in it. Yes, he's miscast. It's just like he's like he doesn't feel like he's involved at all in that movie. And he's usually feels like he's like bleeding for that movie. Right. Well, it's written. It's written for a guy who's like thirty-five to forty. Right. Maybe tops. Maybe it's written for a Chris Pratt. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. He doesn't have any business being in no, that movie. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a no. horrible miscast. Um, I did not see it comes at night. Heard some good stuff about that horror movie, but didn't see it. Not my, not my <gasps> kind of thing. Oh, dude, you need to see that. Oh yeah. Oh, I saw that. I'm not going to say much about it because okay. I'll give it away. So I need to see it comes at very, night. Very, very creepy. Okay. It's very. It's like it has a very deliberate. It's got a very deliberate pace. Okay. And, aesthetic about it that reminded me a little bit of um not john carpenter in the sense that it, it looks like a john carpenter film yeah but it definitely does not okay but it reminded me of the way his his very slow uh, deliberate pacing was okay in his early film i heard there was some he, definite re- uh, influence from carpenter yeah in the movie. okay 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 it, it shows okay good shows. Okay. i'm not, I'm not gonna say out. anything else about okay. it till you see it very good very un- very unexpected oh interesting okay very i'm gonna have to check it out now um, Transformers last night I saw because I got in free and I wish I would have just stayed home that night. Um, there's an obligatory. I love, I love when you make excuse, I love when you make excuses for what you saw. I said it was free. I was like, I'll go. <laughs> Let me see how bad it is. Let me see if it's as bad as I expected. And yes, I was like, why did I come here? Why did I come? I should have stayed home. But it was free. Um, how bad was it? It was. It's up there with the worst. It was. I mean, probably the worst Transformer movie I've ever seen because it was just so dumb. I mean, the worst too. Is it worse than number two? Oh well, is there a lot? Is there? Can there be worse than two? I don't know. I I, I really can't. I can't really break that down, man. It's so hard to even talk about that movie. It's just they're so bad. Are they even? Are they even different enough to tell them apart? No. No, except for Mark Wahlberg being it. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, there's an obligatory shark movie. I think it was called Forty Seven Meters Down. And that was out in the summertime. So you have your shark movie for the summer, yep. right? Last year it was uh, uh, The Cove or um, the Shallows. Shallows, which was actually kind, I liked kind of Shallows. cool. I actually liked it. I saw them playing. It was kind of cool. So um, All Eyes on Me, which was the attempt to take straight out of Compton and make Tupac make, make a Tupac movie. And I heard it was I awful. I didn't see that. Heard it was awful. I didn't see it. Heard it was bad. Um, and then Cars 3, which I saw because didn't I have children. It. And it was... Entertaining, like like, huh? like they typically are, and then Big Sick I didn't see. I heard it's probably going to probably get the Oscar nod this year, if not be one of the most. I heard it's really good. Didn't see it though. And then movie you didn't like and I did, which is Baby Driver. So I did not like Baby Driver, yeah. and I still don't like it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I wonder how I'll feel if I see it again. I think I saw it just the one time. Uh, so June had some and had a lot of movies, not a lot of great movies, except for Wonder Woman. Really, that's the biggest movie that came out that saw that that month, and a lot of other movies that came out. Uh, which brings us into, God, we're already in July, July. so now we're in July. Spider-Man. This is actually a pretty good month, except for one movie out of this bunch, which is my least favorite movie yeah. in the summer, or the year. Spider-Man. We got War for the Planet of the Apes, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I don't think it got enough love. No, not at all, dude. Not at all. That movie is far better than the previous movie, Dawn for the Planet of the Apes, yes, which I was very disappointed with. And on par with Rise, the emotion of it. 
it's a different movie completely because of where, what they are. One's the beginning, one's the ending, and it still has that emotional attachment that they you have, wanted yeah. to have. Yeah, the first one has the advantage of being a much tighter story. Oh, absolutely. It's focused on it's focused on Caesar's awakening yeah. and his rise up. And yeah. Nothing can really top that. But no. This is, but the natural it, continuation and end of the story, yeah. so it's good. But it, yeah. but it does. The second, the third one's a really good movie, and then um, it did not get the love that it needed to get. But I'm glad to see that Matt Reeves is a good director, because I was worried about him with the second movie, and now that he's doing the Batman trilogy, that's not attached to the normal, whatever the story, but it's now a new Batman story. I'm now excited because oh, God, now I saw him do a really good movie. Let's see him do this now. I'm curious. Yeah, I think he's got it in him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dunkirk, which we had a podcast about, which I. I mean, it's just pretty, pretty damn cool movie. I like that movie um, a lot. Yeah, like I said, I admire the filmmaking. I wasn't as impressed by it as a lot of people were. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to see it again, but on the big screen, I don't. Uh, outside of the big screen, I don't think it will do any justice to it. You know, it, it was a really cool experience movie. Um, yeah, right. It really had an interesting. I like the, the interesting take on telling the story, and I just thought it was a unique way to tell the story. That's just about guys, tr- people trying to escape. You know? Yeah, and it's like it's like I'd said before is I thought he was going. My expectation twenty minutes in or so was that he's, he was going to make a statement about the fallacy of time, yeah. and he didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know if he failed yeah. to do it or he just didn't do it, but it didn't never came together. Or maybe you, you, yeah, whatever you thought you were, he was trying to go for it was not his intention, and you were just like, oh, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. I was let down by my own interpretation of the movie, right? Yeah. Right, and that that happened. Just look at me in the Last Jedi. Um, so then, Atomic Blonde, which I know you just recently saw. I like that. Isn't a lot. that fun, man? I really like it. A lot it. of really fun. Like it. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of that movie because it had like I love the fact that it takes place in the Cold War, and that's just the backdrop, right? It's just the back. It has nothing to play in the movie. It's just that's the backdrop, and everything else is happening around that. And I just everything's happening. Yeah. yeah. Now it, I like her. She's got a nice story. Yeah. She gets to have sex with that amazing girl from the Mummy. Yeah. Um, ah, it's so hot. Yep. And um, what was I going to say about it? I love that. I love that she, she's not a indestructible heroine. Like she gets a crap beat out of her. Right. And it shows. Well, like John Wick. And she, yeah. And she gets and she gets tired. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like when she fights that when she when they the big hallway scene fight, mm-hmm. but she winds up one on one with that big dude who is also the number one henchman from the John Wick films. Oh, is that way. right? Okay. He's nice. just got blonde hair. Okay. And um, he was he was in the Matrix films. He he fought Morpheus on top of the subway, on top of the semi. Gotcha. Truck. Yep. So they go at it hand to hand, and it's just fucking brutal. And then it leads out to the car. By the time she gets in the car, when she turns to the guy and says, "Put your seatbelt on." Like, she looks like a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. She's so beat the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, I love the realism of it. it's just like, yeah. that's, yeah, like, there's a lot to admire in that movie. Right. It's, yeah, and, I was, I'm, and I, I'm ignoring the story. I like the story, too. I yeah, like it, story. Was, it was fun. It wasn't nearly as good as John Wick or John Wick 2, even though it has that, you know, that the people involved with right. it. But it was I'm still very entertaining. glad you brought up the fact that, um, so those two guys, the director of John Wick 2 and the director of Atomic Blonde, co-directed the first John Wick. Yeah. So when they separated, and one took John Wick two, and one took Atomic Blonde, oh, you're is that like, how all right, okay. Well, we we get to see who was actually who did what in yeah, the first movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I'm in the opinion, the guy who directed John Wick two is the better filmmaker. I would have to say so. Yeah, absolutely. Because he yeah. he builds he builds a world. Right. The the action sequences still kick. He he grows he grows the John Wick character. It was a more engaging um, story too, though. It, it, interesting. It, you felt more about the yeah. character. You felt plus you had another another movie to go from, you know. Right. Atomic Dot Blonde didn't, but I felt more Atomic, about the first uh, John Wick than I did this one. So, but uh, now Atomic by, Blonde felt more Atomic Blonde for as good as it is feels more surface level. Uh, yeah, I would say it's a good that's a yeah. good call. Yeah, it was a bit very entertaining. Now, my least favorite movie of the year was in this month of July, and Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets or something like that. Um, really just did not like that movie on every level. Another James Dehan yep, miscast. Exactly, right. And it's just, it's a he's bad in it. He's acting like you know a character that he just doesn't belong to be um, or deserve to be. Um, it, it just, it's just, it just not entertaining. I kind of wish I would have saw it in 3D just to see, you know, some of the effects they were using there. It would be some cool stuff. But other than that, there's just nothing to it. What's really unfortunate is is Luke Basson has put 
like the last 10 years of his life into this movie. Yeah, I know. And a lot of money, and a lot of money, and it's just never, I didn't see it. Well, Bob um, brought up a good but, point, and it comes from French comic strips, not yeah, comic uh-huh. books. So there, right. every story was, you know, you end it with a cliffhanger, and then you yeah, right, do right. something different. And that's what this movie does. If you look at it in that way, every scene is like a comic strip. There's not a lot of connectivity or fluidness with them. It's just like it abbreviated scenes yeah, that are yeah, little yeah, comic yeah. strips that are all attached to one. And if you if you look at it in that way, which I think is lost on the viewer, um, unless you know the backstory, it's lost on you. And it's kind of a cool concept if you understand that. But I didn't understand that. So <laughs> you know, it would have been cool if they did all those little mini cliffhangers. Yeah. And then at the end of the movie, in the climax, all those threads came together. True, true. And everything got and everything came it, together in a big climax. And it just that did cool. not. It just did not work, man. It's a bad it didn't movie. Do that, it's a bad absolutely. movie, obviously. Now, so interesting month: Superman or Spider-Man: War, The Planet of the Apes, Dunkirk, and then Atomic Blonde. That's actually probably the best month for overall movies, right? You've had bigger movies, better movies, pretty good but month. Yeah. Pretty good month. Pretty good month. Yeah. August we had probably one of my favorite movies of the year, and a lot of misses, and a lot of movies I didn't see. We didn't see Dark Tower, which I heard was. Uh, Good and bad, but I'm not going to see. Oh my it. god, I've I've seen like 15 or 20 minutes of it. It's awful. Okay, so that's like it's just... like it's like it's honestly awful. Oh, so let's forget that one. Okay, good. I mean, so I'm not it's, seeing that. it's I can't even believe I can't even believe anyone actually made that in this day and age. It, honest to God, it looks like looks feels acted like special effects, photography, editing. Looks like you're watching a B movie from 1996. Kind of what I heard. Now, I swear to God, that I doesn't have anything to, God, to do with the fact that you know it, about the book and you know the story. And no, you're like, no, nothing. Okay, nothing. It's just, I, I mean, I don't. It's not like I'm beholden to the books. Okay, you know, they just show me a good story. Right. Okay. Okay. And but, and I was interested to see Idris Elba as the gunslinger, but he didn't even need to be the gunslinger from the books. Like his skill set level didn't even need to be. Right. But outside of the fact that it has nothing to do with the books. Really? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's so poorly made. Uh, okay. Who did like, that again? On, I don't remember the guy's name. Okay. But they're obvious, like, every set looks like a set. Oh. Every costume looks like a costume. Uh-huh. Like, everything, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so, it's so amateurishly made. Yeah. The big, like, the action scenes are really horribly staged. The... Editing. I don't know if it was a longer movie that they cut down to a shorter film. I don't know the story, but it's trying to cram a lot into a short amount of time mm. just to keep the movie moving. Okay. Instead of worrying about the the narrative element threads right. to tie it together, it's really bad. Okay. Well, it's really bad. I, I, there's a reason why I didn't see it. I'm, I'm never going to see it. Okay. I had opportunities on the plane several times. I'm like, nah, don't want to watch it. Don't want to put myself through that. If you want to go to sleep. Yeah. yeah there you go. Okay. Um, I was disappointed in Detroit that came out this that month of July August. Um, I thought that that's going to be Catherine Bigelow's obviously Oscar push this month or this year. We're gonna, that'll be here the big push for the year. Um, but I was not a fan of the movie. I, I thought it was about something totally different, and what they showed was like an exercise in almost like torture, um, gore. You know, torture uh, cinema. Yeah, yeah. It just it just uh-huh. was like all right, I get it. It was just like. Yes, All right. they're bad people. Yes, yeah. yes, there's bad people. And these guys, these people are going through an awful lot of hell because of these bad people. Okay, I get it. All right. But at any rate, uh, Hitman's Bodyguard kind of was interested in, but just don't really care to see Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson play off each other. Doesn't do anything sure. for me. Okay. Right. Logan Lucky, disappointed in. I was hoping Soderbergh was getting back to, like, out-of-sight level filmmaking, which uh-huh. is one of my favorite movies right. of him. And it just sure. kind of missed the mark in a lot. And... Um, Adam Brody's pretty funny in it. Chatting Tatum is pretty good in it. It's acted pretty well, and mm-hmm. but it's just not a very entertaining movie. It's just more of the right, same. Right. It's more of the same. You know the the big switch at the end where he's smarter than everybody and he, he gets to fool right. everybody out. It's like okay, I, I've seen that movie from you a hundred times, Steven Soderbergh. My mm-hmm. arguably one of my favorite movies of the year was Rin River. That also got limited release and my I think it finally hit theaters in the in the normal everywhere else in August of 2017. Yeah was a movie that you told me you saw it and I was like, God damn it, I can't see it. And then it came out in Costa Rica, but it was out for like four days. Yeah. You missed it, didn't you? And I I didn't get over there to see it. Okay. And then it was uh when I was flying to Paris this last time, it was on the plane. Ah, so you that's right. And I was like, Holy shit, Wind River's on and uh God, what a Yeah. 
he is such a good writer. He is. He is. And it doesn't even. Uh, I forget who directed that. Oh, he directed it. It was his first movie. Yeah. He directed yeah. it. Yeah. And um, there's a scene in Wind River where what he's so good at, it speaks to what he's so good at in on so many levels, is the scene where Jeremy Renner tells Elizabeth Olsen what happened to his daughter. Mm-hmm. And oh. she goes into the bathroom, and she's overwhelmed by how sad this community is and how these people have no outs and no hope and their lives just keep getting worse and worse and there's not shit she can do about it and she breaks and down. she just has she has a miniature yeah. breakdown right yeah. there then poses herself and says, I, I, I gotta leave yeah no i like, i thought that was sadness yeah yeah the sadness of all of everything she's taken like in one day or two days she's getting hammered with how sad right and desperate everything is yeah and she just can't take it. I, I love that because I also love the fact that what it is for her character, how she goes and hides herself that way. She doesn't want to show her vulnerability. Oh, she had to. I love that. She did, yeah. Yeah, it's a great scene. I love the movie. If you haven't seen it, that's a movie that maybe people haven't seen out of all these movies because it was hard to find. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't out for very long either, So especially for you. Yeah, yeah. But I one of my favorite movies of the year, and there's another movie coming up in the next month or two that I, we'll talk about that we've talked about in depth as well. But in September, I only saw one of these movies. And there's five movies that had potential to be seen. It, which I thought looked terrifyingly frightening that I couldn't see it. I didn't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first to say, I'm not afraid. That I'm a pussy. That was a huge success. Yes, it was. Huge. Yes, it was. Huge. I just, I can't, I, I know me, I just don't like that shit. Uh, I wanted sure. to see American Assassin, but it just felt like a, like a straight-to-video movie. You know, it just didn't seem like I had to see it in the theater. That's the well, one the only Keaton. reason to see that is because Michael Keaton's there. Yes, but it just it didn't do enough. It was like, okay... That story just doesn't seem interesting enough to me right now. Like, to go they, to the theater. There are a dozen TV shows with that same That's time. what I'm saying, man. Yeah, it just didn't seem like it was, like, worthy of me taking time to go see the theater. I'll see it eventually, right. probably. But, hey. Now, I did not see Kingsman, because I just actually just watched the original, and I wasn't too in, in love with it, so I didn't care <laughs> about the sequel. <laughs> right, right. And then American Maid, which I'm disappointed that I didn't see. Doug Lehman. Yeah, I really... I. Hope I get to see that. Yeah, soon. eventually maybe on the play right home. Yeah, yeah. so great. Yeah. I really want to see that movie, but I, I missed it. And then the movie that I saw that a lot of people are going to hate, and I understand completely why, and I kind of love it, kind of hate it myself, is Mother Aronofsky's. No, oh, yeah, yeah, and it's got a it's a very divisive movie, but it is powerful and it has it's a striking movie. So I, you're going to like hope it. That I think. It, uh, I hope that it gets uh, an Oscar nod this year. I think it's. Um, I absolutely hope it does. I wish it does, and um, I have a feeling it won't, but I hope it does in some way. Whether it's writing, cinematography, or or direction, I would hope it gets something there. Uh, if not, Jennifer um, uh, uh, Lawrence, she's amazing in it. She's really good in it. Um, so that's a decent month, though, of movies that I didn't get to well, see. Oh, you know what I? You know what I finally? I could I couldn't watch the whole thing. What's that? But. Because you mentioned Jennifer Lawrence, I watched Passengers with her and Chris Pratt. Okay, it's not a very good movie. I didn't didn't look like it. And plus, it's, I mean, I, you know, my thing on Chris Pratt, he's just not that. He's not that. <laughs> okay, Chris Pratt. So uh, if you go, I don't know when this came. They made it came out this last year. It's a Netflix movie called Ten Years. It's about a ten year reunion, and it has Chris Pratt, fatter Chris Chris Pratt, like after you know Parks and Rec Chris Pratt. Uh, so it's not this year then, it's much older. Um, it has Falcon from Avengers. It has uh, Poe Dameron. It has... Really? Yeah, uh, and a couple more of the people that I can't remember now. Um, uh, Justin Long and a couple of the people in the movie. It's about a, it's about a reunion. And okay. really funny, but Chris Pratt is essentially Mike Miller. <laughs> When Mike drinks and Mike gets drunk, it's oh, hysterical. Okay. Bob was pointing it out. I'm like, yeah, that's Mike right there. It's actually pretty cool. I would check it out. Oh, Channing Tatum's okay. also in it. Channing Tatum's in it too. So ten, um, years. 10 oh, years. Ten years. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay. Pretty fun. Okay. So, um, but you were saying you saw um, what was the movie you said you just saw that um, ten years? I said uh, it was the reason why I brought it up because someone was in it. The same person, wasn't it? You just saw something. Jennifer Lawrence's Passengers, Chris Pratt. That's what. That was the connection. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. October, best movie of the year. Dun, dun, dun. Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner. Fuck, it's so good. Yep. It's such a good movie, though. There's not much. I won't. All I, all I can say is, like, that 
if you love movies and if you don't love Blade Runner 2049, even if you don't like the movie, you have to love it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's just, I mean, the level of craft on display and the patience and letting the movie play out visually mm -hmm. and the details, what case character goes through, who Deckard's become, oh, yeah. the, the power play, the... The thematic element of the of the AI that I'm just saying I love Blade Runner like it's so fucking good and I'll revisit that movie for years. I, absolutely, and it, it is it is is Wind River is right up there for my favorite movie, but because of what Blade Runner is and the power of that movie and the fact that it got better in the second viewing, it is the best movie of the year for me, uh, without a doubt. If it doesn't receive, if that thing doesn't get 15 Oscar nominations, it, it's just they just people just are just taking a swing at it. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. costume design, production design, sound mixing, sound editing, oh, man. musical score, cinematography. It's got best picture, go for it, man. Best picture. Yep. Best direction. Like it has it, that movie has so much to say. <laughs> yeah. There is so much going on in that movie. Absolutely. So, it's this, anyway. that's why it's the best movie of the year. Now. Um, Fuck yeah. Uh, in Thor, we had two big ones. We had Thor... I'm sorry, November, we had two big ones. We had Thor uh, Ragnarok come out, which I think we both really enjoyed. Um, yes, far more I than so. I think we ever deserved to enjoy a Thor movie like that. It was uh, pretty pretty phenomenal. Uh, Justice League, which we gave our opinion on earlier. You did not like it after finally seeing it. I really enjoyed Justice League, even though I know there's a better movie in there. I'm very forgiving for it because I wanted it's, to see that it's movie. Un, it's unfortunate that we won't see yes. Zack Snyder's original film. Because yeah. did you watch the video I sent you about it when they laid out the people who'd seen the Justice League rough cut? I think so, yes. That sounds like an infinitely better movie. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And I, it's too I, bad we're not going to see that movie. We're not going to see it, unfortunately. And we might not see a continuation of this story anyways. Even a continuation of the story. I think this is over with. It's yeah, over. I think so. And unfortunate. But you know what? I got to see the guys who I wanted to see, and I had a lot of fun with it. It's not perfect in any stretch of the imagination, but, man, I enjoyed it, and I had fun the second time even. So um, I think it's sad that we're probably not going to see Henry Cavill as Superman again. That's very sad. I'm okay with not seeing Ben Affleck. I liked sad. him as it, but I'd love to see him as Superman again. And the Superman yeah. that we all want to see. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so between Thor and Justice League... Uh, Spider-Man, Logan, um, I'm missing probably one, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's six superhero movies this year. God damn. I know, right? That's a little overkill, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, and then, so what, what's up? Oh, yeah, well, you got to count Logan, obviously. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I would say out of all the superhero films, Logan's my favorite. Out of all the superhero movies, I think it's a quality-crafted movie. Thor three is right behind it because of the just craziness of the movie and the and the and the, and the chances he's taking with that movie. For like sure. like sheer like sheer entertainment value, Thor. Yeah, hands down, Thor. Oh, like, for I'm, sure, I'm entertainment it's... value. Yeah, but yeah. the movie I'm going to watch again in five years is going to be Logan. The one that has more impact, more more substance is, is Logan by by all means, by all means. Now, I really wanted to see this movie. Never came out in the theaters near me. I'll catch it eventually. It's called Blade of the Immortal, but I think it's um. I think it's a uh, Takashi uh, Miike. Miike uh, movie, yeah. Yeah, so I want to see that. I heard really good things about it, especially our, our love after uh, 13 Assassins. Um, I saw Murder on the Orient Express. Enjoyed it, but very forgettable because we know the story. Well, I didn't actually know the story. Oh, I never read the book, but uh, it was okay. It, seemed, it looked like. Yeah, you know. and it was. And it's, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good Saturday or Friday night with Paul, Connie, and Tina. You know, and it was entertaining. We had dinner in Gossip movie. Enough. It is what it All is. Right. Uh, Wonder, I heard, was really good. Good good kid story. Good, you know, mm -hmm. uh, good coming of age story. Kind of, you know, good, good message movie. And then right. we haven't, I haven't seen anything this month except for Star Wars. <laughs> I put the death of Star Wars. That's funny. Um, the Greatest Show on Earth, or The Greatest Showman on Earth comes out which actually nah, looks pretty interesting i think it looks interesting. i mean i'm just i don't know i just movies like that just don't interest me okay yeah and i probably won't see it but i actually thought it was i think maybe tina and i may even go see it who knows jumanji comes out this month if everybody didn't i think it already did come out have no interest in it even though the trailer made me interested because it's so different from the original movie i i'd watch it many a plane maybe and then uh <laughs> all the money in the world comes out and that looks like another oscar i wish movie. i'd like to see that just yeah because i like really scott that's really scott yeah i didn't know that now i actually kind of do want to see it so that is the year in some even some movies that are still coming out this year uh for the next week but um 
I would say overall a pretty pretty decent year for movies. Do you not have an opportunity to see the post? I know it doesn't. It's an open nationwide. Uh, it, yeah, if, if it comes weeks, around, right? I'll check it out. If it comes around, okay. I'm gonna look for it. I, I definitely. You know what I have post. found? Um, I have found that even though I'm not initially interested in Spielberg's. I don't know what, like his topical films, like uh-huh. Bridge of Spies, uh, being the less example. I like I, I look at the trailer and I'm like, that doesn't really interest me. But then I watch the movie and I'm like, God, this is such a good movie. Like Which, he's just the post. He's always got no uh, Bridge of Spies. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I always forget that this guy's got a very strong point of view. Right. And if he's making this movie, he has something he wants to say. And he's and. <sighs> I don't want to see it, but you would watch it because it's him, and you'll end up enjoying it because he's quality. He's a quality it's filmmaker. Actually, if you have a chance to see *Bridge of Spies*, I think you'll like it. Like it's just, I had zero interest in the subject matter. That's what I'm saying about his movies all the time. They're interesting. Yes, but he's making these films because I won't give away what *Bridge of Spies' underlying theme is. Okay, he's making these films because he's relating things that are happening either today or what he thinks is going to happen in the future. Okay, and the, he's got a very strong point of view. And it's a good movie. And I, I was watching it, and I was like, why didn't I go see this in the cinema? Because it's like, like a lot of Spielberg it. movies, they just, his subject matter doesn't grab you, but then you, when you realize... But they're good. Yes. But they're good movies. You're, you're going to watch and, it anyways and see it. Like, and Terminal. Yeah. Who wants to see a movie called The Terminal? It's, it sounded stupid. And yet it's but a there's very... So many, yes. Yeah, there's so many little gems in that movie <laughs> that are so good. And... Um, so, yeah, so even though the post, like, on paper, I'm like, eh, it's probably a great movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, again, you got to give yourself the ability to see his movies, especially on the big screen, because he's 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 the best filmmaker of our history, he's, of our he's, generation. He's the, he's the master. Yeah, absolutely. That's why he is the master. That's right. I, I would say a pretty good year, though, overall. I mean, not really a lot of Very great movies, yeah. you know. You don't have a lot of really awesome ones, but you have a lot of really good ones between Blade Runner and Thor and Logan and John Wick 2, and uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, and, uh, uh, my God, there's a couple more that are Wonder Woman, of course. Um, you know, you have some really good movies out there, but then you have a lot of, you know, movies that didn't perform as well as they should have. I, I feel like the, and I think this is probably because of television, I think that the writer is starting to come back. In uh, mainstream filmmaking. I would love that. I would love to see yeah. better quality. You have a, a movie about Wolverine, and it's a great story. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, you know, I don't know what what's really coming out this next year. I haven't even looked ahead to see what's coming out. So hopefully, it's the last couple years have been good for films. You know, there's been a lot of good movies or quality filmmakers, quality people making movies, and they're making movies every every year now consistently, which is great. We had another Delhi and Bellanue movie at this year, so that's always a bonus. You know, anytime you get one of his movies on the big screen. Year. It's a good year. <laughs> but as True. we sign off for the year, uh, I want to thank everyone out there who has been watching us on YouTube. We, we've hit a nice milestone there. Um, obviously, our, you know, we still, we're still on SoundCloud and iTunes. And wherever you're watching, we want to thank you for your continued viewership with the J. Craig. Yeah, we, I mean, we really love the fact that people listen to what we have to say. They're interested in what we have to say. Right. Um, for whatever reasons you listen to us, like the reasons aren't important. The fact that you do is what counts. And we love it. And as long as long as you're there listening, we're going to be here jibber jabbering. We'll keep talking. So, we'll keep uh, finding topics. We're, we're, we're we just finished about. our. We just finished our. We didn't do a whole year of 2016, so this is our first full official year. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, I, and I, I like I said, I want to thank everyone out there. Uh, you know, and especially Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And uh, looking for some big things here with the J. Craig. And if you haven't been to the jcraig.com, I would highly suggest you join, not join, or jump on the jcraig.com. We made some changes. We're, we're, we're making some changes to the right. website. That's it's right. going to be like a real website. Right. Yeah. You know, we equipped with, you know, my thoughts of the day or thoughts of the week, you know, keep th- bringing up things. So it's not just our podcast, but we have some more subject matter on there for you to peruse around and, and, uh, and keep listening and we'll keep talking and uh, hope for a good, good follow up year in 2018. Right on, Jason. Well, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, Craig. With your company again for another year. That's right. forward to 2018. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, Craig, Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, my friend. All right, man. It's been a good Merry year. Christmas. Let's, uh, Merry Christmas. And let's have, a, let's have a knockout here next year. Let's follow up with a good one again. Sounds good. All right, brother. All right. Later. Later.